of them is uh, condoms. The next yeah. is French ticklers. Oh, yeah. Something that looks like a cat toy. You know? All right. And then... Yeah. I think we've done all the damage we can do. Oh, no, no. We and then, oh, I know. Started. And then, uh, then a little the little button you walk over, uh, press it, and you hear your chick going, are you ready? To- <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. And then, the, then the disco music starts. Uh, oh, yeah. Check no action. Uh, 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 oh, Christy. I babysat a cat a couple weeks ago. No, it went in the show. Oh, he. Then he started uh, picking his out of his litter box and dropping him in the middle of the living room floor. <laughs> oh, this is a protest. <laughs> it did seem like some sort of action. Cats oh, are, that's funny. you know, jerks, basically. <laughs> It's the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom Records presents the ultimate kick-ass collection. It's the greatest hits of the cowbell. You'll get them all. Mississippi Queen from Mountain. (laughs) Honky Tonk Women from The Stones. Lowrider from War. <laughs> yeah. Down in the corner from Cretans. <laughs> Finally, Rock's most underrated instrument steps up front. <laughs> it's Kick Ass Cowbell, <laughs> exclusively from Bob and Tom Records. You'll also get Alky the Clown's famous talking cowbell routine. Hey, how are you today, Clarence Cowbell? <laughs> Oh, is that right, man? Me too. Hey, Clarence, you want to watch a cartoon? Yeah, me too. Yeah, let's roll the cartoon, all right? Oh, oh God, I got a headache. Uh, all right, roll the <laughs> damn cartoon. Plus, you'll get the cowbell's greatest Olympic moments. It's Kick-Ass Cowbell from Bob and Tom Records. <laughs> this collection goes beyond any previous Cowbell compilations, featuring remixed classic tracks where we turn up the Cowbell. <laughs> it's Led Zeppelin. There's a lady <laughs> All the glitters is gold And she's buying the stairway The Beatles Yesterday <laughs> All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay oh, You want cowbell? We got it. You'll be moved when you've heard this collection. Act now and get Rock's Greatest Bells <laughs> and Whistles featuring Molly Hatchet. Steve Miller. (laughs) The Scorpions. (laughs) And of course, the theme to the Andy Griffith Show. (laughs) It's kick-ass cowbell only from Bob and Tom Records. No cows were harmed making this record. Unless, of course, you count the cheeseburgers we ate in the studio. I said, where are my headphones? They're on your head, you... Oh, I got you right again, Tom. Thank you. Hello. How about you? It's the Bob and Tom Show. Where's Josh? He's still giving birth and uh, no, he's roommate. No, he's filling his damn water jug. <laughs> no, here's the deal. I'm going to bill him for that. <laughs> he, 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 you he, should. <laughs> he came in... And he got a bird book from your son. Yes. And he was so excited, he had to rush out of the room. I think he was playing with himself, actually. Oh, hey, buddy. What's going on? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Nothing. No, no, no. Hey, welcome, Pat welcome, welcome to the Hi, show. Hi, Chick. Hey, Christy Lee. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hey, how are you? I'm chatting with the producer of the show, <laughs> if that matters. <laughs> Are you saying uh, you saying that was uh, some sort of show preparation? 
No, I'm just saying we were chatting. <laughs> I mean, it's annual show prep day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ace Cosby. Uh, Chick. Uh, he's looking. He wants to mention that our buttons are labeled with our names on them. Tom <laughs> is what he's doing. Well, for two years, Willie has been used to the corner. Yeah. yeah. Willie. Uh, well, I see those buttons on your thing over there. I, yeah, I don't blame you. I have Hi, no Willie. idea what these do over here. <laughs> these have weird names on them. I've got to get this sorted out. Hmm. Why are you so scared of Ace? <laughs> I'm not scared of Ace. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going he's on. He's a very wise man. Thank you. I think it's reasonable. Oh, he's got. Bring uh, it, old man. He has a, like several hundred buttons on that machine in front of him. I've got, I don't know, more than 50. Well, I, you're an idiot. I'm See, allowed to that's... touch about four of them. I've got 88 over here. Is that a keyboard <laughs> reference? <laughs> it <Yeah>. sure is. <laughs> I don't know what they do. You got the capo uh, on that organ yet? Okay. Another county heard from. <laughs> there it is. There go. Uh, well, welcome to the program. Hey, it's a party. You're invited. That's what I like to say. Dear gang. Already we've got mail. An email. Uh, I heard Tom lost his tuxedo pants. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did you ever find them? No. I, this is serious. I'm, I'm, this I'm, is serious. I'm hosting this big charity event, and I... Uh, Tom, God, if you want, a you can borrow mine. I'm not going to. What's your, uh, what, what's your, the length from the foot to the crotch area? Your inseam? Inseam, yeah. What is that? I have no idea. Okay. Well, that's good. No idea. You don't know? High water? You no, know? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> yeah, he's what, what are you, 34 and a half? I don't know. I've got the, the guy that does that. Uh, I don't know. He's... You constantly wear, are wearing knickers. You realize these, that. These pants are fine. They are not. Yes, they are. They're uh, they're at your ankle bone. They're Why too high. Why don't you high. just do what you did for Sam's graduation? Were you, not, you weren't just sitting in the crowd, by the way. You were speaking on stage. Yeah, of course And wear was. a shirt, tie, jacket, and cargo pants. That's a good look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. You did that? Uh, I forgot. I, no, I'm supposed to wear a tux and Man, I, i've got one cargo, cargo but the pants. pants are missing so anyway i enjoyed sorry. the jean, jean su suggestion and i think it could uh, look great in in case tom cannot pull together all of the necessary I've accessories got some black jeans, yeah. i had an alternate idea he could grab a plaid shirt and try to replicate mel gibson's look from his B braveheart oscars wardrobe <laughs> i know i would donate some money for the charity even if uh, i got him to wear a kilt so Luke recommends a nice, fashionable kilt. I get upskirted by some generous donor in the front row. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and dear Bob and Tom show, yesterday was Josh's birthday. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. And he gets a professional cake to look like a stack of pancakes. What did poor Pat get? <laughs> a cake from a store and a stern talking to about playing Josh's birthday song instead of the Johnny Cash parody. <laughs> 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 to Pat's respect and uh, myself being a musician, his work is awesome and should be appreciated. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love Pat. I listen to the whole show at work. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, You're welcome, uh, Chaz. Um, uh, Pat, Chaz Pat received his... He got one of our first custom cakes from our cake lady, Amy. Yes. Love and then... And, and a year off. Yeah, well... Got a Kroger cake. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Kroger delicious. cakes are delicious. I just they had are. a Kroger cake Sunday night. It was great. And the savings never stop. Pat's not saying it wasn't delicious. He's just saying there wasn't a lot of thought put into it. That's what hurt his feelings. Oh, I see. You mean the previous year where he had, what was it, a guitar case, um, uh, the address of a pawn shop near you? That was a, that was a great one. Then, uh, then yeah. there was a year off, then the store bought. <laughs> <laughs> store bought. Once again, it was... He's also not going to let you forget the year off. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my birthday fell on a Saturday. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's understandable we couldn't do it on you know a Friday my philosophy or a on Monday. Birthday. My philosophy on birthdays is once you're... I don't know. Like 18? Uh, yes, yeah, the 16's big, 18's big, 21's big, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. But the rest of those in between, unless you're a little yeah, kid. 25, you can rent a car. Get over it. You know, it's, it's okay. Um, okay well, we're I, bet, out. I bet that works at home. Hey, could you shut it up, please? Well, we're know? airing out grievances to make this more at home. What about oh, boy. getting the cake and then you forget to give it to the person uh, oh. the whole weekend? Oh. There you and go. Then, and then you can't do birthday dinner that weekend, but then it's okay because you just make up the birthday dinner never. Well, what I can about certainly, that one? Is that what I can certainly understand yeah. that just as long as, you know, it wasn't one of your children. I, that Willie, you could. You oh, could. <laughs> oh, no, that, it was Willie. That would. What? <laughs> yeah, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, what, a, what a blow, Willie. I'm sorry. And you were turning, an, you weren't turning like a magic number. You weren't turning 25 or 30 or 35. <laughs> no, I was just turning 29. See, that's what I'm saying. Those that's in between years, number. get over it. You know, I had a friend who uh, turned like 41, 43 or something, and he looks at me and goes, hey, uh, I've been meaning to talk to you. I go, oh, okay. Because you know, uh, 
you forgot my birthday. Are you kidding? A guy? <laughs> oh, is, is a face, guy we all know. I know. Is, exactly is Facebook responsible about. for this? I don't, I don't know. Session but with not in this birthdays. case. But I started laughing because he's a comedian, and oh. he was not. He was not joking. Okay, you know, like I said, get over it. Yeah. Okay. Willie, you could have looked at that cake uh, not being given to you on your day here at work as a blessing. It was Why given. That? You didn't have to share. Ooh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. I did have like a The weird... cake was here in the building. Uh, as you recall, I wasn't feeling well, and the people in charge of bringing the cakes from the back of the fridge to the front of... oh, weren't what... here or something. Oh. What, a, what a beautiful <laughs> dance you do. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been, a lawyer. Your should have been fault. a lawyer. Yeah, it's a <laughs> pleasure <laughs> to watch you work. Hey, look, Let I'm responsible for the steering, not keeping the engine uh, running. Uh, uh, <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know what I want to do right now in, in honor of that letter? Yeah. Um, I would like to um, have Pat play the song we tried to have him play. <laughs> you, you, where you wanted me to do this it. time yesterday. Oh, Johnny are, Cash. Are you prepared to do that? Yeah, I could do it if you want. <laughs> okay. Now again, um, because because we have another, we have a, a really good Johnny Cash story in the news. Oh, you're about it's not abridged, but it, have you have you? I don't want to give it away. Has yeah. anybody seen it? I, no, no. There is no. there is a legit Johnny Cash. A uh, story in the news mm-hmm. that's very funny, but uh, this uh, this involves a, uh, a s- this story was a car accident. Uh, well, let's we'll do it in a minute so you can get ready, Pat. Um, it involves a a car accident and a wedding ring. It was very funny, but we'll do it in just a few minutes so you can get ready, uh, and I'll set up the story. The the other Johnny Cash story. Have you seen it, Christy? It yes, is it's really very funny. really funny. Um, also, I will agree with that. Uh, coming up in sports, you want to give me the teaser? Well, uh, NBA playoffs start tonight. We uh, got a couple of NFL um, happenings. Uh, bar- broadcast teams are out meeting the public. It's very exciting time. Uh, and Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> He's evidently going to be back in the ring uh, one more time, and we've got uh, David Rush rearing his "look at me" head. Oh boy! Uh, one more time, that, the Rick, and, and the Ric Flair thing, but build a ramp. Rajon Rondo <laughs> making the news again, okay. and not a good way. Did he buy a condo? Uh, no. Oh no. God, not this again. Well, right <laughs> now, I want to tell you about Might have been uh, gunplay. Go you're, ahead. you're up early. It's probably important to get plenty of sleep, especially if you get up early like we do. And uh, this is actually, I didn't know. This. May is uh, called Better Sleep Month. All right. So here's a, there's a, a way to get some better sleep, of course, is the sleep number. But Christy Lee, yes. quick survey, your sleep number is? 45. Which means what? It means it's softer than most people. Softer oh. than mine? I'm a 65. Yes. Uh, Chick McGee, you're a? 100, a firm mattress. And with a sleep number, it stays firm, Daddy. But at the touch of a button, you could go down to 45. And by the way, either side of the bed has its own setting. So everybody's happy. That's what they should call it, the everybody's happy bed. And it's uh, time for the sleep number special Memorial Day sale. So what they've got going now is 1000 bucks of savings on the famous sleep number 360 special edition smart bed. Find out what that means, smart bed. It, it communicates with you, and it tells you well, what you can do to get even more sleep, quality sleep. The queen bed now only nineteen ninety nine. This is a limited time offer. Details available, of course, at your Sleep Number store. Find it by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. I love my Sleep Number bed. You'll love yours, too. Coming up. We have a couple of cool things happening in the world of news, including what to do with your Maserati or not. Uh, how many times have I thought Yeah, that? me too. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24 Good morning, I'm Mark Allison. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Tuesday, May 17th, Jessica Hooker on the way. Hooker the Cooker from the Bits and Pieces podcast. We'll find out what she's cooking today. Also on the way, maybe the Bob and Tom Show puppets. Now, I can't guarantee anything happening today, but I do know that the newest rendition is in motion. Tom's been talking about it, and uh, we don't know much. The puppets, of course, operate in pure secrecy here in the Frigamall building, but it should be coming soon. You can check out the latest, which is Bob and Tom Show's Smack Tom with the Bob and Tom Show puppets. That's at bobandtom.com. If you get a chance, Smack Tom with the great rock group, The Black Moods, and the Bob and Tom Show puppets. Again, bobandtom.com and across all social media, rolling through a Tuesday with you right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Coldplay wants you, the fan, to help energize their show, literally. The band's going to install special dance floors and energy-storing stationary bikes at stops on their latest world tour. 
They're going to ask you to help power the show as you dance or pedal along to the music. It's part of the band's pledge to be as energy-sustaining as possible and create a lower-carbon footprint even when they tour. The team song encourages folks to meet the Mets, so when Shakira took them up on that offer, it turned out well for both sides. The Colombian board singer and her son Mylan were invited by the team to Saturday's game against Seattle. The team's Twitter feed has posted several pictures of them with Mets players like pitcher Max Scherzer, outfielder Travis Jankowski, infielder Eduardo Escobar, and manager Buck Showalter. Shakira says some players asked her to sign baseballs for them. She says next time she's going to ask the players to sign the guitars for her. And Brandi Carlisle, Allison Russell, and Yola are the leading nominees for the 2022 American Honors and Awards. Each of the three artists has a shot at the top three awards, Album of the Year, Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year. Other nominees for the Artist of the Year are Jason Isbell and Billy Strings. The winners are going to be announced September 14th at a ceremony in Nashville. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jeff Rothpan here in the studio with us. When I was a kid, all these other kids got to go to the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember begging my dad, please, I want to go. All the other kids are going. He said, no, we just can't afford it. Tickets are expensive. He ended up taking us to this Bob Circus. It was actually called, no, this is true. Bob, Bob Circus. 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 Yeah. And it was in a mall parking lot. <laughs> and what a difference. I remember the guy yelling, and now huge midgets. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, there was just one after another. The, the bearded man. <laughs> I think they actually had the talking mute. Hi! <laughs> what the hell is this? How does he do it? Uh, it's amazing. He's a mute, yet he speaks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. They discovered the scorched ring box, but the ring inside was not damaged. The car was on fire, Josh. What do you want? What this, kid, this kid buys an engagement ring. God, what do you got for us? Our car is a burning thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it heats up the engagement ring. <laughs> Steaming hood and melting tires. I left the ring in a car on fire. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, what else would you be doing with your time? Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, gang, it's Ken Tarmac. Kenny! Hey, we just landed. I got a call on the white courtesy phone. I'll tell you what. What? Corporate has spy goggles today. They oh, can oh, find me anywhere. Really? So I'm on the plane. I'm on the 620 guy. Like uh, I was saying, uh -huh. I'm next to some guy that kept going on and on and on today. Yeah. And almost wrote, oh, gosh. Oh, I have another phone call. You do? Oh, and it's Tobik. Uh-oh. I don't want to take this one. Why not? Hey, you want to hear a trick? Well, okay. Watch how I lose them. All you have to do is duplicate your voicemail greeting, and they have no idea it's not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just listen to this. All right. I'm going to click over. Okay. Listen. All I've right. got to memorize it, though. Okay. Okay, get, okay, hang tight. Hi, you've reached gold level sales leader Kenneth Tarmac. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't take your call at the moment, but your call is very important to me. I check messages every quarter hour unless in flight, in which in case I'll answer upon landing. <laughs> so after the tone, please leave me your name, two numbers, and a brief message. Or you can Skype page, text, or preferably email me at ktar underscore backslash closer dot com. <laughs> <laughs> He's still talking. Is he talking? Yeah, he's still chatting me up. Oh, God. I'll catch you later. Oh, I'm going to get off of this. All right, bye. We just landed and I pulled it off again. Oh, you oh, did? Great. I don't okay. believe I called it... Bob and Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not... Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Still... 
glowing from his birthday celebration from yesterday. Had a very nice time. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. There's Ace Cosby at the Track Phone Hotline Hot Phone. Howdy. There's Willie Griswold. Yo. I'm Jake McGee at the Sports Desk, and here's Tom. Thank you very much. Now, we uh, promised yesterday at this time that we would uh, check in with Mr. Godwin. Uh, I should point something out. Um, Pat's new album is called Captured Live, currently number two on the Amazon album comedy chart. How cool is that? Just cool. came out uh, a couple days ago and uh, already number two. That's great, Pat. Pat also is uh, the winner of the International Songwriting Competition Comedy Division again. All right. An award uh, won by Haywood Banks a few years back and many more uh, friends of ours, but more than 20,000 entries, so nice work, Pat. Thank you. Now, uh, this is a, a, a song that you did um, a couple days ago, but it, it, it's from a story. Do you remember the story, Christy? Um, if not, I can remember it pretty much for you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give her any hint at all. Oh, I have crazy. no idea. Well, Last time you told me it was about a bridge, and I did a story about a bridge. And didn't was this even about know the couple the that lost their ring? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a really oh, the fire story. It's the a couple. really sweet story. I got a story about a bridge. Or am <laughs> no, I, it am was I a helping fire. Or, am I helping or hurting this right now? This is not the there bridge, was, you idiot. <laughs> there was a couple, and they My had a, a, a car fire, and the firefighters showed up and one of the ladies pulled the fireman over and said hey this guy was about to propose to his girlfriend the ring was in the in the car and they were able to find the ring it was in a scorched box but it was still fine and the guy got down on his knee right there and proposed now that's a great story it's great it is it certainly is yeah and, 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 and uh, you know we god bless the fire the, best. the firefighters for going in there and yeah everybody got out nobody was hurt right no one was hurt obviously the cars are t in literally toast mm -hmm. but um you have, you have a tribute to this lovely story pat our car <laughs> is a burning thing <laughs> <laughs> and it eats up uh, the engagement ring. <laughs> Steaming hood and melting tires. I left the ring in a car on fire. <laughs> Firefighters broke into my burning car on fire. They hosed it down, down, down. It was hotter than a funeral pyre. The box burned, burned, burned. But the ring's not on fire. The ring's not on fire. Oh. Yeah. Marry me, baby. Go. Very good. Very tribute good. to the doors in there, secretly hidden. Huh? <laughs> the uh, the that, the couple, uh, Mr. Myers Hart and Ms. Brooklyn Stevens. Nice. Are gonna get married with? That's what a. I mean, that's such a great story. That's a great proposal. Not and, in know, front you, of people at a football game yeah. or you know. And telling your kids, you know, it's, yeah. it's a fun, fun, sweet, sweet story. Chrissy, you shouldn't say this is a great proposal though, because people online have these dumb ideas, and we have these gender reveals that go crazy. If you say it's a good idea, I don't then people mean are going to start like faking tragedy. No, I don't mean that. And, and gender is a social construct. There uh, should be no reviews. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, for saying that. That's I just mean being in the moment, not having to be a big. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, I just don't want people to try to copycat that. Sure. Like the gender reveal thing. That is crazy. I've got some people out of that are flying to a gender reveal party. What? All right. It's what? A, yeah, I don't want to go. Well, uh, I think that is the most pretentious thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's <laughs> walking out. Uh, yeah, that's something else. And also, we have reached an era in which that is problematic. So, uh, well, flying in general? Or? No, no. That's uh, dangerous. Uh, we do have a, a very unusual flying story today. Another Chris, guy uh, just uh, is in the plane as it lands itself and no, you take credit for that it. That story's great. Stories? But, Christy, you may be the only one that's. <laughs> have any of you guys heard of something called flightradar24.com? Flightradar24.com, no. no. It's really cool. It's this website where you can track. Uh, any, anyone's flight pattern. Oh, you can, yeah, there are oh, other, you can I'm on a different the, website. But make it yes. as easy as possible for the terrorists, can we? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, no, I, you can do that, I mean, you can do that sitting right. in your plane, know where you're yeah. flying. Yeah. I do that with, it's it, well, called flight aware, but same but thing. Th there's a thing. All the airlines you, web. That you uh, can apps, do with that, where yeah. it, when you can, for example, you could write the name Josh in the air, Mm -hmm. And it would show up on the radar, whatever the th I don't know if it, whatever it is, it would show up as a pattern. You yeah, know, it, it, we have a story about that right. coming up today. This kind of this I don't kind of understand what you're saying, but I'm not. Uh, this, this, this has happened. Like some, remember, some airmen would uh, they drew they got in trouble because they did, they drew a penis 
in their flight pattern. In other words, the so it showed up. You go out and you right. and when you fly, it makes a it shows where you are and it makes a pattern that. M the only thing I uh, no, uh, there's a uh, very lovely commercial about a guy jogging around. Yes, it's making very a, similar. Ma making a heart and he gets it home, and prints it out for his wife for Valentine's exactly. Day. Exactly. Same deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you All wouldn't right. see it in the sky, but yeah, you would it's see not, it on it's the not app. sky writing. <laughs> right. So Which it's really nothing then, and it really doesn't exist except in imaginary way. <laughs> Kind of. Could you it's kind of like drawing a picture on a piece oh of paper. You could just draw it. Could, Here, Christy, happy could you, Valentine's. I'm not speaking to Chick. Fuel. Christy, could you pass me this note? Is it? Is, no, no. How many, you're fascinated by it. How many S's are there in AO? Um, <laughs> two. Okay. I go with two. Unless you're talking to both of us, in which case, three. <laughs> two and then O and then S again. Yeah. Okay, so we, well, we'll be touching on that. It's Come fascinating. <laughs> just what, it's you're, just, you're a baby. It's just fun. <laughs> It's just fun. Pilots you never having go in fun. There and see all the. It's kind of scary if you look at some of these. If you're going into an airport and you see like thousands of planes that look like they're all That's trying to land the at the same time. Because the professionals know what they're doing. Oh, it's fascinating. Thank God. Once okay. Again, no, uh, no, they, they're just like us. <laughs> they're are not you kidding? some sort of super. If we heroes. were air traffic controllers, can you imagine the humanity? The, oh God. The the, the carnage. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> my bad. Um, I was checking my phone. <laughs> hey, Josh, what's it mean when the light goes out? <laughs> Why are all these buttons blinking red? I, I, I can't hear you because of the siren. <laughs> I'm sorry, Flight 23. What'd you, where'd you say you were? <laughs> but I'd like to see a pilot come in here and do w uh, whatever it is the, the hell I'm doing right now. Okay? I'd like to see one, too. Uh, Maybe he could get to sports. Oh. No, we have to talk about Pat and a song, I'm sure, and a birthday cake. No, we have to and talk about... And you and your missing tux pants. And <laughs> I didn't bring it up. Who the hell... Oh, that okay, now, I want to... Okay, no, I, it's, it's true. I, I, I am missing my pants for my tuxedo. <laughs> it's true. People, it's now, true. Someone, I don't know who brought that up, but it's true. You I brought am it up. missing my tux pants. The point is, uh, someone suggested I just wear a, a pair of black jeans. Yeah. Okay, now, Christy, I want you to see if you can draw this connection. You ready? Here we go. Romeo and Juliet. What if, what if I were Romeo in black jeans? That's uh, one of my favorite songs. Yes. It's, it's great. Uh, it's kind of got lost in the show. That is a great song. Is that Forbert? Michael, Michael Penn. 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 Michael Penn. He was here. In, Michael his, Penn. He's, uh, his brother is the famous <laughs> actor. That's great. Michael Sean. Penn is great. Is that his real name or is it a pen name? <laughs> We're hanging out a second. Chick, you want to do your new show? It's both. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> let me. I, I deserve I this more I, than anyone else. No, I, no, I know. No. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I didn't lose the music the other day. Yeah. I just erased it uh -huh. because he started saying, "You want to do your new show?" Yeah. No, it's up to me when I do my new show. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> I hit the button. It's not you, turd. He goes, me. you want to do your new show? And you see him sat back in his chair. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 No new show. If I do the new show, it's my... The, the way to get me to not do the new show is to go, Chick, you want to do your new show? So and, you're then, gonna... and then please point at me a lot with your wooden stir sticks. <laughs> my fake anger about this is off the chart. How many sticks you have right now? Four. Ah. Now... <laughs> Uh, the point is, um, that great song is... Uh, <laughs> the great song? Oh, I love this song. Yeah, it, I do, too. It, it mentions um, black jeans, if I were Roman. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's probably why we, maybe that's why we, we played it. I played it. Don't take credit. Most Beatlesque oh, songs that anybody else has ever written. So good. Oh, well, it's far better than hear... anything the Beatles ever <laughs> Well, it's a great song. Oh, you, should oh. hear, you should hear Try. There's a Beatles uh, break in a song he does called Try. That's really good. That song's really good. If you get a chance, check out Michael... Michael Penn. Try's a better song. Uh, okay. Well, they're pff, an excellent musician. <laughs> Pleasure to bring uh, that I'm back. I'm sure he's listening right now. I don't no, want to upset him. I'm sure him, he's but... not. I just want to, never mind. Why do I bother? Uh, it's funny, Josh. You thought it would be funny. <laughs> oh, oh, so <laughs> you're just going to This suggests that his last Michael name Penn. might be a pen name. <laughs> That was, it was, that was it's very funny. Fun. It's a bold choice. No, it's, it's no, so it's like a perfect it's like joke. It was the simplest, dumbest. <laughs> it's over the middle. It <laughs> works. So help me God, if you're interviewed for a podcast and you go, you know, one of the new things that I've come up with is we stop the show and ask someone what they were thinking. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty proud it's your of that show. Piece. I no, no. I give you full credit oh, for it. Um, Cancel. Show <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you happy now? 
<laughs> yes. And it's hot in here. <laughs> it is hot in here. Yeah, could somebody turn that thermostat? Oh, Jesus. Is that being controlled from Somalia? <laughs> uh, anyway, Sorry. Major League Baseball. Is that what I was going to talk about? No, that's not right at all. NBA playoffs start tonight. The uh, Miami Heat, you know, Josh. How we been in the playoffs? Shut up. You know, Josh. <laughs> it's not the heat. It's the it's not the humidity. It's the heat tonight hosting the Celtics. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Nice. Took me a while, done. but it was well worth it. Oh, I... It? Speaking of the NBA, Rajon Rondo's in trouble. Oh, boy. Hopefully, this guy is going to jail for quite a while. Oh. Apparently. Unless he's let out on a bondo. According to, let's let's hold that for just a second. It'll be hard for me to impress Tom this morning, isn't it? Did you hear that sigh after I said that? Hang on. The mother of Rajon Rondo's children is making some pretty serious accusations this morning. Uh, she's according to making them, by the way, via phone from her condo. According oh, okay. to, is this Rhonda? Once again, <laughs> once again, let's hold that until we hear the story, oh, and then maybe you'll want to go. Gee, uh, this is Mother Rhonda, right? This now. is pretty serious. Nothing for Rhonda. Rhonda. Oh, his prepare a glissando. For me. His, <laughs> oh my God! Can you guys button up? My goodness. His girlfriend Ashley Bachelor, the mother of his two children, has gone to court to file an emergency protective order after she alleges. He pulled a gun to threaten oh, to, just kill like Hondo. Her, to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> you got to admire. He's not giving up. Hondo, Hondo of course, a famed Western, yeah. <laughs> which in with a lot of gunplay, you see. His girlfriend says Ron Rajon was playing video games with his son on May 11th when Ashley asked the boy to separate some laundry. Yes. <laughs> Bachelor says Rajon became enraged and ripped the game col uh, the game console out of the wall in front of his son. Something on your mind, son? <laughs> <laughs> Ashley says Rajon then continued his destructive behavior, smashing everything in the house, oh. from a teacup to outdoor lights to trash cans. Uh, the girl then said the kids were upset after seeing their dad losing it, so he try she tried to de-escalate the situation. She says Rajon responded by making a death threat. Saying, I will, you. Okay. Kill you. Uh, Rondo, so the question is, was he winning the game at the time? Hang on. <laughs> Ten, uh, then Rondo <laughs> left, according to Ash, Ashley, before, came back about 15 minutes later with a gun and approached the back door and started banging on the window with his gun. My goodness. So they had he had all that stuff in his house that he could break like that? He needs Marie Kondo. Yeah. No <laughs> joke. Kondo. <laughs> That is very nice. Man. Oh, it's pronounced Kondo? It's yeah. Kondo. What, where did I get Kondo from? I think it's the That's Michelle song. Kwan. There's a song, Kondo, Kondo, Kondo. Kondo. That's Kondo, what I was thinking Kondo. of. Yeah. I think you're connecting a different person to it, but okay. Okay. Like a John Doe. Yeah, there could have been John, John Doe. Doe. Yeah, boy, no, keep it up, laughing boy. Domestic abuse at its finest. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fun. Threatened domestic abuse. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, he's, he's breaking stuff. He's he broke a teacup. Well, <sighs> of course, it was a teacup poodle that he snapped in half, but still. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Oh. Am I making friends this morning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. so, evidently, uh, maybe Rajon Rondo's played, played his last game. Rajon Rajon. He played his last game in the NBA. Uh, I see professional wrestling calling. <laughs> <laughs> they have standards, too. Oh, well. They have standards, I guarantee, are better than the NFL's. Well, but pers but but thankfully, this is an isolated incident in the sports world. In the NBA, something happening like this. Okay. NFL yeah, he, he got so mad, I would have thought it was a fan that uh, called him a name. Uh, NFL officials will meet this week with Cleveland Browns quarterback, uh, pillar of the community, Deshaun Watson, as the league continues to investigate whether he violated the personal conduct policy of the NFL. Oh. He's been, the grand jury will not file charges, but there's a personal conduct policy that he has to answer to. A person familiar with the plan spoke with uh, reporters yesterday, Watson facing 22 civil lawsuits from massage therapists accusing him of sexual misconduct. Uh, actually, in the, in the court papers, it's referred to as the <laughs> He's scheduled to speak. <laughs> How would you spell that in, in documents? Boy, I don't know. I don't know weird uh, combination yeah. of S's and L's. He's uh, going to speak with the uh, league's representatives in uh, Texas, where the uh, incidents uh, took place. And Joe Buck and Troy, and, and I understand that they're going to have the meeting in uh, like the very best seats at the stadium. Oh yeah, yeah. 
and so the people judging him will be offered those seats for free for oh i see <laughs> yes next 20 seasons. yeah it feels pretty good sitting there doesn't it yeah, yeah. yeah i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you know these seats have uh, their own weight staff did you yeah. know that no nachos you haven't had a hot dog jerry over there mm. 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 you want to call a play who wants to call a play <laughs> you guys ever watch marie kwando <laughs> Isn't Qu so why Quando's why right? Quando 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 why why why? Well, you're you're confusing him with um. Quando Quando. Uh, I'm not kidding with Mary Quant. Oh, okay. Mary Quant is a. What famous. about Michelle Quant? Michelle Kwan. Kwan, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary Quant is a I'm famous sorry. British uh, she made fashion makeup designer. She made back in the day, too, I think. But Mary Quant is a very funny. I just refuse that somebody who, uh, I refuse to accept <laughs> that anyone who helps people clean their homes has condo as a last name. Oh, sure. I think it's too on the nose. Well, and especially to minimize all the things. They have <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They hypothetically live in a smaller place. Mary Quant's husband, Harry. Harry Quant. How is Harry Quant these days? <laughs> he's uh, very why? unpopular. Yeah, <laughs> rarely seen. He's in and out. You know, he's in and out. But, but thankfully, gratefully, he's had a long, rich life. You know, they call yeah. him old, old Harry Quant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. been around a long time. Graying around the table. Dry sense of humor. Oh, wherever else you may work. Here comes old Harry Quant, they'll say. <laughs> they'll, they'll shout. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on in, old Harry Quant. <laughs> you old son. You may want to... <laughs> There should be a service that Googles the obscure references on this show. <laughs> Today they referenced Mary Quant. Remember when they did that for uh, Dennis Miller when he was on uh, Monday Night Football? They had all everything he was, they followed the broadcast along. And they were, what Dennis just met, mentioned was a Gilligan's Island episode. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what we need here. That's exactly what we yeah. need. Yeah. Yes. You should have somebody following you around all the time like that. Somebody like, come in for the first hour and go, <laughs> well, now when Tom talked about uh, uh, Frank Conn Converse. He was talking about uh, Blue Blue Angel or whatever the hell that uh, uh, cop show was called. Blue Light or with uh, Blue. Uh, oh gosh, now you got me yeah, forgetting. Now forget Coruscant Blue or something. No, no, Coronet Blue. Coronet, Coronet Blue, Blue with Frank Converse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's my internet password. Uh, but let's say today, for example, they would uh, they would Google uh, Michael Penn and find some great music. There you go. They sure would. Or yeah. they or they would Google Mary Quant. Mm -hmm. Get a quick yeah. chuckle. <laughs> so find out that she's. <laughs> Or find, out, find out that she was famous for uh, shaving her pubic hair in the shape of a heart. Oh, her old, isn't that uh, something? Her old husband, old Harry Quan. Uh -huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, never shaved. Uh, no. By the way, uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> Huge beard. <laughs> we have, oh, yeah. We have uh, coming up um, interesting news in the world of golf. Uh, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, uh, Ric Flair... NHL round two of the playoffs starting tonight, and I'll have a full 20-minute analysis. Oh, coming good, up. good, good, good. Why start that during this break? <laughs> right now, um, uh, I want to uh, help right, you have some peace of mind. Oh. Peace of mind at home. Uh, All right. How do we get that, Chick McGee? Well, you can get peace of mind and design your own security system and install it. It's the do-it-yourself home security system. Simply safe, and we love the break-in protection, but it's not always outside forces that you need protection from. Sometimes it comes from inside. And this is Terry's story, a Simply Safe customer. She went away for the weekend for her daughter's wedding. The morning of the big day, she got a call from Simply Safe's 24 7 professional monitoring center. They let her know that her system had detected water in her basement. Uh, time is critical because even in a situation like this, uh, just an inch of water can cause more than uh, thousands of dollars in damages. So she made arrangements to have the water. Uh, shut off, and it was because Simply Safe warned her. Did they saved the Bowberry family. Terry. Terry Bowberry. That's right. <laughs> Simply Safe detected the water just moments <laughs> after the leak had started. Protecting against floods is one of the many reasons more than 4 million people trust their home protection to Simply Safe. Uh, you could customize the perfect system, design it, and install it all yourself. Go to simplysafetom.com. And if you go today, you get a special offer because you know us. Claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. That's Simply Safe Tom. Dot com. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. That um, that water protection thing, very important. Make sure you've got proper smoke detectors, carbon monoxide yes. detectors. That water thing can um, save your um, basement. Yes, yes, I've I've experienced this. It can be a big, big problem. Uh, coming up, we're going to find out why uh, we're hearing a little bit of uh, a little bit of Major Lance. What? Oh yes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Again, It'd be right back. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Got a comment? Our email is bobandtom at bobandtom.com.
More Bob and Tom next. State law. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Jim Gaffigan joins us in the studio. A family man, a clean liver. Now, when you're on stage, Jim, you don't do a, a blue kind of show, do you? I'm very clean and kind of, uh, you know, I talk about cake for like an hour because, you know, cake's an important cake. topic. Cake, Absolutely. tell me about cake. Well, well there's a lot of different. Cake's a powerful food. Cake can actually bring people together. You know, it's Bill's birthday. Yeah, I hate that guy. There's cake in the conference room. Well, I should say hello. <laughs> Who am I to pass judgment on him? <laughs> it's his big day. There's so many types of cake. There's rum cake, which makes sense because we've all been eating cake and thought, you know, this needs booze. <laughs> booze. Bottle <laughs> liquor. I don't have time to eat and drink. There's fruit cake. That's a bit of a disappointment. Oh, yeah. yeah. You think that would be better? Fruit, good. Right. Cake, great. Right. Fruit cake, nasty crap. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Have you tried fruit cake? I don't even think that's fruit in there. You're like, when is that a skittle? <laughs> Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, the Bob and Tom show is being streamed at this address. If you'd like to watch this morning, it's at bobandtom.com forward slash live. We've got cameras in studio. You can watch the show while it happens. If you've never seen what the cast looks like, this is your opportunity. Again, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. bobandtom.com forward slash live. A lot of folks have smart TVs and like to have their breakfast and get ready for work watching the Bob and Tom show. And other folks like to get to work and call it up on their computer, pretend like they're working and they're actually tuned in listening to us and watching us. And we thank you for that. We won't let your bosses know it can be our secret. And you are listening to Bob and Tom 24 seven. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with things you may have missed. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has given the strongest hint yet. He would like to pay less for Twitter than his $44 billion offer made last month. Musk told a Miami technology conference a viable deal at a lower price would not be out of the question. Also at the All In Summit, Musk estimated at least 20% of Twitter's 229 million accounts are spam bots. A percentage he said was at the low end of his assessment. The appearance came a few hours after Musk began trolling Twitter CEO Paraj Agrawal, who posted a series of tweets explaining the company's effort to fight bots and how it's consistently estimated less than 5% of Twitter accounts are fake. Someone new is joining the ranks of fitness enthusiasts who monitor the number of steps they take each day with Fitbits and other fitness tracking devices. Only Helen isn't human. She's a 30-year-old white rhino with Walt Disney World. Helen went out into the savannah at the Kilimanjaro Safaris attraction at Animal Kingdom on Monday wearing a fitness device all day. The purpose to gather data on the number of steps she takes each day, whether she's walking, running, or sleeping, and which part of the man-made savannah she favors the most. Technology there at Disney. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. And the fact remains, there's nothing better than being a VIP. And I don't mean like his dudes on Pervert Ray with Xanadus. I'm talking about a Bob and Tom VIP. Best thing, you'll never miss another minute of the show. I swear to God, you can hear the show here in the morning, and then because you're a Bob and Tom VIP, you'll get the podcast of the entire show, a 12-month library of podcasts, hundreds of Bob and Tom comedy tapes, and a 60-day video archive of the show. Bob and Tom VIP. You have to get it. It's state law. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, of course. I bet you were fun in school. 
You had a good time at school. Yeah, I bet the teachers loved you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. They uh-huh. did. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to school. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you about this. <laughs> You look like you spend a lot of time lifting weights. Are you a fitness Oh, buff? yeah, I like to pump a little iron. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I drink the protein shakes, take the vitamins, take the St. John's for my wart. I do the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you got a wart, dude. I like to go out and chalk up. The whole key is chalking up. You got to chalk up when you go. You got to chalk it up. I got the weight belt on. Chicks dig the weight belts. They dig the weight belts with a name on the back. You know, Steve. <laughs> I don't know who Steve is, but he's missing his weight belt. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were waiting for? That's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like to pump it up. You got to be in top shape because I play golf. You do. You guys know the golf, bit. Oh, yeah. I love golf. I got a lot of golf. I got some new golf jokes. I play a lot of golf. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Every hole, like 14,000 strokes. That's a lot of golf. You know what I mean? (laughs) I look like a propeller out there just swinging away. (laughs) I love golf. (laughs) I swing with one hand. I don't even use two hands. I don't care. The instructor's always trying to change your grip. Like, hey, you're not the boss of me. (laughs) (laughs) I hit that ball as hard as I can, walk six feet, and hit it again. (laughs) Every hole I use the driver. Par three, I don't want to see a seven. An iron. I let the big dog eat. I grip and rip it. I got the weight belt on. Steve's playing some golf, baby. You give me a golf cart, a 12 pack, and a lake, I'll show you how to have fun all day. You ever wonder how far a golf cart can go in a lake before it sinks? You ever wonder? 13 feet. I love golf. What a sport. It's a good sport. Bob and Tom 24 7. Vegetarians always want to force feed you their Food, of mm-hmm. course. I mean, the Garden Burger. The Garden Burger, it tastes just like a hamburger. No, it a doesn't. A Garden Burger is to hamburger what a post-op transvestite is to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it looks something like it, but one whiff. I'll tell you, that's not tuna fish. It's cat food, and it's not fit for human consumption. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you are listening to the announcement. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Howdy. Pat Godwin in his performance room. Hello. All by himself. Uh, lonely over here. <laughs> lonely and cold. Lonely and cold. <laughs> Think how we feel. <laughs> no, that's not right. But at least you got a full stomach, huh, Pat? Yeah, I do. Oh, I no, you were supposed. To, what? I'm so hungry. Uh, oh, lonely. Let's lonely. try it again. <laughs> ah, at least you got a full stomach. Huh? Oh, I'm so hungry, Josh. Oh, so that means lonely, cold, and hungry, oh, Tom. Christ. What are you gonna do about Tom, that, young man? Tom, <laughs> there's cake in there. I'll let you eat cake. Tom, oh. brace, brace yourself. Okay, <laughs> remember I said that. Okay. Hi. Hey, uh, Josh Arnold, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. I'm not bad. There's uh, Ace Cosby at the Track Phone Hotline Hot Phone. Hi, Jim. There's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Go ahead, show Tom. What? And I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. What? What are those, SpaghettiOs? Yeah. With what? the meatballs. Uh, chicken meatballs. Uh, oh. What did you just say? Chicken meatballs? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a Remember wow. from yesterday, we we mentioned SpaghettiOs yeah. for 10 seconds, and he brings a can in. <laughs> no, no, 10 no. seconds is no, generous. No, no, no. He's been in my office for months. Oh. You keep SpaghettiOs in your <laughs> office? Chick, I'm glad you asked that question. I get cravings. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, what am I saying? I just had a cup of Well, cake. okay, so that saying? begs the question, what else do you have in your office that you might get cravings for? Animal crackers? Uh, <laughs> chicken, cr- chicken crackers? Chick- oh, those chick- chicken of the sea crackers? Chicken, those yeah, things? Chicken or chick biscuits? Chick biscuits. Chicken, yes. yeah. Chick biscuits. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, why were we talking <laughs> about... Diet of a four-year-old. <laughs> uh, it was the anniversary, <laughs> anniversary was, of spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah. No, here we go. Yeah, 1965, the Campbell <clears throat> Soup Company introduced... Spaghettios. And that can from 1966. Look at it. <laughs> oh, Spaghettios. Um, I was trying to remember the rest of that jingle. Great jingle. Yeah, that's the only part I remember. Eat with a spoon. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of spaghetti. I, I prefer regular spaghetti. Uh, although I will say this, Josh and I agree on this. From a nice restaurant. Canned ravioli from Chef Boyardee. Yeah. Excellent. Better than anything you can get. You know, you guys said that. So the other day, I broke out a can of ravioli. I'm sorry. Awful. Yeah. Was it not good? I tried it too. Yes. And I used to love it as a kid. Did you heat it up? 
Yes. That's your mistake. Did you smoke some reefer before? No. Oh, yeah. well, really you, high. you didn't cook it right. You know what? I think I was a beefaroni girl over the ravioli. Do you remember I've seen, I've seen pictures. You were a beefaroni. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, how much did you weigh then? <laughs> hey, I don't have any body issues. That's okay. You. Have you ever made eye contact with someone while you're laughing at them? That felt so terrible. Well, that's yeah, somehow I, somehow okay. I blame I, I, somehow I, I blame Ace. I don't know how this how this started, but uh, perhaps is uh, that your favorite canned food, uh, Chef Boy R D uh, ravioli? Of course, because Hector was a neighbor of yours in Cleveland. Da, 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 da. Chef Hector Boyardee, of course. Uh, I, I don't typically eat uh, anything like that. But You don't uh, eat anything don't out of a can ever, do you? I, one of my favorite things, one of my easiest recipes I can give you real quick. <laughs> you take a can of a cream of mushroom soup, a can of tuna fish. Tuna noodle casserole. Tuna noodle casserole. Make some noodles, put a thing back. It's delicious. Oh, oh I'm at it last night you, for dinner. And then you take a burns torch and... <laughs> On the surface of the thing, get that crispness. You made that last night, Christy? Uh, actually, I use Annie's uh, white shells oh, okay. and cheese. And How many helpings it... did you have, Tubbs? <laughs> oh, a packet of tuna in it. Goodness. I had one. God, oh. I have leftovers. No, 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 I could have no. brought them in. Listen, leftovers. Seriously, look at the size of her. My God. <laughs> I need a little thing. It's getting embarrassing. I had to say something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You can you hear your chair screaming. Yeah, I just, you know what I'd like to do is. What about? I wish I, you know, I have a seesaw just down the street here at my old house. Oh, you want to prove something? <laughs> yeah. I, or, or in the case of Josh and Christy, it would just be a C. As I'm, as I'm sending Christy into Flying orbit. In the you'll go, you, now, Josh, how do you feel about Remember when you were a kid and that was your goal to get on a seesaw and launch the other guy? <laughs> or have them slam the ground so that God. they bounce off of the <laughs> What about the blob at camp? In those old camp movies, they have the big blob on the lake, and you jump on one side and those. launch. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Can Careful. we do a lake day, and I can break Christie's legs? Careful with the word blob. That was Christie's nickname. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, but you're just, close. Uh, tripling down. Oh, look at her; she's the uh, smallest person I know. <laughs> yeah, we need a palate cleanser, ladies and gentlemen. This? this is Major Lance. Yeah, why did you play that why crap yesterday by him? And you had well, if you remember, we had a story Boone. about... Uh, oh, are we going to go through this General again? Booty. We General had a story General about a, a guy who's named General Booty. General Booty, the uh, economy, the quarterback in Oklahoma. Blah, 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 blah. It's just a fun <laughs> story, and there, there are people out there who have uh, first names that are also military ranks. Yes. We also got a chance to play some great music from Major Harris. Um, and, of course, I cited the fine newscaster, Major Garrett, <laughs> that many of you have ever oh, watched seriously, the news. Seriously, Lord. if you want to date him, it's okay. <laughs> no, never mind. I'm uh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, all take a walk down memory lane. Franco-American SpaghettiO. <laughs> the meat of spaghetti you can eat with a spoon. <laughs> this guy just sounds like <laughs> SpaghettiOs goes to war. It, that's yes. exact. I mean, it must have been kind of... The neat new spaghetti you can eat with a spoon. <laughs> the greatest invention since the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Oh, I'll tell you the best thing that came. And it can't. Didn't he more beef stew? That's one of the finest cans. 72 really seconds. Good. All right. <laughs> Can you play just the beginning again? I want to yeah, hear how it says. Yeah, what year is this? SpaghettiOs goes to war. When he says SpaghettiOs. Yeah, SpaghettiOs. Franco American SpaghettiOs. <laughs> SpaghettiOs. I don't know. It uh, might have been uh, 65. But they, they're deliberately doing it to sound like an old fashioned documentary, even then. That's funny, and uh, I, I'm with you guys. All you I remember know that. is that uh -oh, might be spaghetti. That might yeah. be cutting edge from the time. You don't yeah, know. Maybe not it's but it does sound. It sounds like an old newsreel. No, they're deliberately making. You ever it hear sound a Slinky cute. commercial from when we were doing kids? your part? <laughs> <laughs> it's that, 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 that. Everyone loves it's Slinky. slinky. It's, it's Slinky. It sounds like it was made da, by da, 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 da. Uh, Marconi. Yeah. The Slinky, just take your money and shred yeah, it. Yeah, we know. I had a lot world's, of world's worst toy until it bends and then for a minute it never goes back. to Seconds of fun. I Next thing you know, there's get some kid <laughs> tying it between two trees you know, the, the to pick his friend down. off as he awesome. rides by on a bike. You, you get, a, you get a, uh, slinking enough Play-Doh, you can fashion yourself a home gina. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Oh, that's that's gonna hurt. Excuse me, Ace. <laughs> Josh, Mike, off. Okay. You know the uh, best thing that went down the stairs in my house when the slinky it was uh, it was me. So, oh, no. Tom, you spent Push. a bit of party yesterday. So yeah, Major uh, Garrett, Major Garrett, he's an anchor. He's a Washington uh, correspondent. 
he's, he anchors on weekends, and he's the guest. And, why and he's I? the love of Tom's life. Hey, <laughs> stop. No, I'm just saying, I think it's fun when people have a name that's the same as a rank. Remember there was Major Major in Catch-22? Uh, well, that was his rank. And his, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Shriver. I, uh, I just, you just watched, I hope this guy Major Booty is a terrific, successful college football So Major player. Major is Major's last name, not his first name. But you know who's got the first name Major? Oh. Uh, Major Harris. I don't know what, I mean. what about Major Major Lance? What about Major Dundee? <laughs> oh, How about I'm majorly bored? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little sad. Careful. Right now. Right Fatty's now. Fatty's right. Right now. <laughs> see, hey, hey, Slim, I'm your only ally. <laughs> yeah. You may want to shut up. Whatever, Chunkles. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you fed here. The commercial's Man, coming. Right. got you, Tom. I'm hungry. Uh, we'll be right God. back. I'm hungry. I don't know how she's with, with her major mouth load. Let's uh, make that Christie. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> hungry. There's, there's, <laughs> there's Mama's there's, gotta eat. Hey, there's, oh, there's, there's, there's cake in the oh, in the God. green room, El Gordo. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. This this is the Bob and Tom Show. Want to share something? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. got some extra from the Bob and Tom show. Are you a computer geek? No, no. I see I didn't grow up with computers. Mm -hmm. That's why children have the advantage. They slip out of the womb. They're born with a password. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you look yeah. at the ultrasound, you see the sex of the child who its internet provider is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're an email guy then. Oh, no, no. Well, I check my email. I never get real emails. They're all junk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a junk box, and the junk box is like, look, we don't even have time to sort out this stuff. <laughs> and it's all that burn DVDs, lose weight, consolidate debt, and then be like, young teen sluts, whores, <laughs> triple X. <laughs> Thousands of it. And then I got a weird one in the middle that says, do you need a birdhouse? <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I actually got that. I'm like, who's the birdhouse guy? And then every day I get this email, Jim, do you want to enlarge your penis? Yep. And I, and how did I get on the small Willie email list? That is the real <laughs> Listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. These are stupid. Them are not stupid. They're stupid. Them are not stupid. They're stupid. Essential it's morning radio. They're stupid. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. 24 7. Don't forget about watching Bob and Tom tonight, a video webcast of highlights from today's Bob and Tom show tonight. Oh, sure, it's May 17th, and you think, what could the highlights be tonight? Well, you got to tune in to find out. It's a four-hour radio show. You may be at work when the best part of the show happens, or maybe you're still sleeping. You just never know during the four hours what part might make Bob and Tom tonight. That's half the fun, tuning in to find out, hey, I heard that on the radio, and now I'm watching it. Bob and Tom tonight. Again, the video webcast of highlights from today's show tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Bob and Tom's YouTube channel, our Facebook page. Just check out bobandtom.com for more detail. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The White House is taking steps to ease a nationwide shortage of baby formula. Among the measures announced by the Biden administration include reopening the largest domestic manufacturer of baby formula and increasing the level of imported formula. The Abbott Nutrition Plant has been closed since February because of contamination issues. Before it can resume producing formula, however, Abbott must overhaul its safety protocols and procedures. McDonald's is pulling its golden arches in Russia. The U.S.-based burger behemoth 
is selling its 850 restaurants in Russia over the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine. Mickey D says it is looking for a buyer who will keep its 62,000 workers in Russia employed and keep paying them until the deal's closed. McDonald's said it's the first time the company has ever de-arched or exited a major market. And two more defendants have pleaded guilty for their role in a multi-million dollar scheme to manipulate the Amazon marketplace e-commerce platform. All told, six people have been charged in the conspiracy, which federal prosecutors say involved paying bribes to get Amazon employees and contractors to leak confidential data. That data? Well, it would be used to grant certain sellers a competitive advantage on Amazon Marketplace. The two men who pleaded guilty yesterday faced sentencing in September. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom 24-7. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm sick <laughs> of being sick. <laughs> I've been in my bed all week. I feel like dick. <laughs> I'm sick of <laughs> my TV. <laughs> now I'm hooked on all the soaps on ABC. <laughs> I try to read a magazine or hear the radio or watch the bad news bears again on NHBO. <laughs> I'm sick of being home because you think of stupid things when you're alone. I'm sick of this old house. And today I might try on my wife's new blouse. <laughs> I saw two women fight like cats on Jerry Springer's show. Because their mom was sleeping with their older brother Joe. I'm sick. I'm feeling bad. But at least my older brother's not my dad. <laughs> I'm sick of these four walls. And my arms are tired of playing with my dog. <laughs> I'm sick. Uh, oh, bravo. Thank you. Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwait, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I got thrown out of J.C. Penny the other day. <laughs> really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> you believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins in there? Uh-huh. And they taunt you, too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal now. Naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We can't go anymore. Holy that's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom. It'll be a nice yes. trip. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. And there's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. He's at the sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Manning the track phone, hotline, hot phone. And he has a death grip on his can of SpaghettiOs. <laughs> there's Willie Griswold. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk. And here's Tom. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Yes, sir. Um, Josh, um, on the attack. How so? Well, you were attacking uh, Christy. We were talking about uh, SpaghettiOs because Ace brought some in because he keeps them in case he gets a hankering for SpaghettiOs. Yeah. Uh-huh. He keeps them in his office. Uh, and then yesterday we were talking about them because they were created, I guess, released in 1965, did I say? And you this did. is a commercial from that year. Franco American SpaghettiO. <laughs> and it goes like that, yeah. Hmm. yeah that is really funny. Spaghetti-os. Franco American spaghetti holes. And then American forces hey. attacked the front lines. Man, of- I would have been a god at that time. Just talking like this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Not have to worry about some maniacal control freak sitting across from me for Get four decades. <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Some, some loony <laughs> despot. <laughs> we were just talking about you in the break room. 
of course. <laughs> and we were saying it's so good you are who you are because if you were a, just a normal guy and act the way you do, you'd get the hell beat out of me <laughs> on a daily basis. Oh, well, there's some guy out here telling me I shouldn't eat in this restaurant. I don't know what's going on. And then he's telling me uh, my car seat's in wrong, so I'm going to go knock him in the face. Speaking of restaurants, I, I would like to do a... Uh, well, first of all, Ace is a big fan of SpaghettiOs. Uh, I, not, I, I prefer nice pasta, but uh, wouldn't it be great to go into some really high-end Italian place? <laughs> Waiter comes up. Uh, I'd like the uh, SpaghettiOs Alfredo. And he's, I'm sorry, so we don't have that. <laughs> you call this an Italian restaurant? <laughs> storm out. <laughs> what? Hi, never. SpaghettiOs with bol uh, <laughs> bolognese? No, no, bologna. Bologna. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that would probably be pretty good. I've had a craving for that bologna that has the red, uh, it comes in the red wrapper. The red tube? The red tube. Yeah. Man, that's good stuff. It that's is good stuff. I haven't had bologna in 15 years, I bet. Now, you know, really? The, secret, yeah. the secret to frying bologna, Chris? Oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. This is on you, McGee. I apologize <laughs> deeply. I'll talk to you, Sincerely. Jeff. I know this is no, You have a frog. Fr <laughs> say you, you take some nice... We all know this I have by a, now. You know, you need to hire somebody about every seven years. Because so, we're worn out. Let's be honest. So then the new guy comes in, I and he's a, worn out, too. I am, <laughs> I'm, this is a great cooking tip. Take some... Uh, <laughs> oh, Josh, Josh, take, take some... Some extra virgin olive oil, oh. right? Just a nice, flavorful, really good. Extra virgin olive oil, and then a uh, nice frying pan. And then when you take the disc that is the um, the bologna that comes, you know, pre-cut like that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you you make a small slice at if it were a clock at twelve, three, six, and nine. <laughs> yeah. That way it won't it won't dome up. Right. You see, right. it's, it's mm -hmm. genius. Thank yeah. you. You know Can what? You put your thumbprint in the center of your hamburgers when you fry them, so they don't. I've noticed that doesn't make that big of a difference. Oh, I think it makes a big difference. On yeah, the not grill. My, really. My, What's the difference? The problem most people make is they turn them over too much. That is the thing. Exactly. Once. Flip one time. That's right. What one is the time. thumbprint theory? It keeps it from juicier. Yeah, and it keeps it from. You know how your hamburgers. Juicier. Keeps other people from eating it. <laughs> yes. Do you, let your, do you let your hamburgers finish cooking before you throw them down your hatch? No, I got to eat them right away. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have a pre-dinner, right? You got to eat before, and then I'll start Have you ever cooking. had someone that runs out of hamburger buns, so they make hamburgers, and they make them long, and then you have to eat them in a, ham in a hot dog bun? No. And they don't taste what? right? No. Well, what? No. Wait, what happens? Wait, what what? To go? No, I, I don't dine at idiots. <laughs> Welcome to Idiots. We ran out of hamburger buns. Tonight we have vegetable soup with Cheerios. And, uh... So you've actually done that before. Yeah, you, you don't have any hamburger buns. So, so you, you've made your hamburgers. So you made the hamburgers, you make them long and thin, and then you put them in a hot dog bun. All right. And there's oh, something okay. about it that you know just what? tastes weird. We have uh, Hooker the Cooker coming in. Maybe today. they're raw in the middle? Who yes. knows? <laughs> Jess Hooker is bringing something in to eat today. I can't tell you what it is, but it's very interesting. It was on her Instagram. But maybe we'll ask her to make hot dog-shaped hamburgers next week. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to. I have got done that to. before. It's got to. It, it's just weird. So he's done that for it, you Do you remember before. the thing when they had the green ketchup? Yes. And it yeah. didn't go over. There's something. Yes. Uh, there's all kinds of things we associate with food, and part of it is shape. You know what I associate a tubular hamburger <laughs> with what? I bet you did too. <laughs> oh, Doesn't it look just, like a uh, oh, dump? <laughs> Maybe that's why he liked it. Maybe that's why he did it. Dad, what's yeah, for dinner? You know, Turd burgers. <laughs> yeah, no, also, they're not made out. Also, of you know that some of the guests were so homophobic they ate them like corn in the cob because they didn't want to be shoving. Uh, them. Okay, <laughs> you hit uh, homophobic like a robot. <laughs> Homo homophobic. I am homophobic 2000. <laughs> Why are you wearing a pink shirt? <laughs> Not Adam and Homo Steve. Homophobic. Stop, stop mincing. <laughs> wow. This is, uh, just got texted to me. Apparently, Kostaki signed a hot dog bun for someone. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that may have been at uh, Tony Paco's yeah, or whatever. The, right. uh, yeah. I've, I've done that, too. What's Tony Paco's? It's a wonderful Hungarian sort of fast food restaurant. What do you and, think? Uh, After you sign it, what do they do? Isn't it in They put it in a case. It's in Toledo, isn't it? I yeah. Yeah, there are many wow. in Toledo. Cool. I never heard, heard of that. Does it um, mold up and everything over the years? Or? The hot dog buns that you sign are not real.
Oh, don't oh, tell oh, people oh. that. So I thought it was oh, like I was being asked. I thought it was like a <laughs> Lennon cased in glass. <laughs> yeah. Russian thing. It's a bit funky yeah. after. It's kind of hard to read the signature years. after the mold kicks in. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, dumb man, dumb, okay. dumb, dumb, dumb idea. I'm sorry. Um, where were oh, we were? I'm sorry, we were doing. Dog. We were doing some. We were doing a little bit of sports, dog. and of course, we were listening to. <laughs> that's right, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of Major Harris as we continue. Great artists with first names that are also military ranks. I think we've been doing this all day. We've exhausted the field, haven't we? we got Major yes. Lance and Major oh, yeah. Harris. Yesterday. The time is right. Is this great? No, it, the thing is, it's it, a is, song. it is great. And I just don't like that you're ruining it. I like it so much. <laughs> Sorry. People will hear this story. Really was shaking as Run he was talking from to the you radio. <laughs> Now, do yourself a favor, get into some Major Harris or some Major Lance. Mm -hmm. Or some chairman of the board if you can find it out there. I don't know what the hell the problem is there. But. Here's something you'll hate, Dad. Have you ever listened to Major Laser? Major Laser? He's like a DJ EDM guy. No, I have not. He may be very talented. Oh, who did the song? Lay? Zer. Who is that? I do not know, Jack. Yeah, it. Can you do the, the yeah, prop yeah. to get that? Lay? Zer. Wow. That's really <laughs> good. Yeah. Oh, here we go. A Dear Bob and Tom show. Yes. Major Harris is also the name of a beloved quarterback at uh, WVU in the 80s that took us to our only national championship. No kidding. There you go. Uh, against North Dakota in 1988. What do you got Lu there? WVU West from a guy Virginia named Adam University? Thank you, Adam. Is that what that yeah, is? I guess. That's from Adam. Thank you. Lupe Fiasco. What do you got there? <laughs> Willie, Lupe Fiasco, Laser. Oh, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knows what that is. It's a great song. No. I don't. Oh, sorry, can you grab that? I don't want it. <laughs> Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, fellas. Hi, Hi Floyd. Floyd. I've enjoyed your food debate going back and forth the way you kind of do. I've got one that I'd like to tune up if you don't mind if I chime in with it. Oh, okay, I'd love for you to. You're talking about things that don't go together, Josh putting Cheerios in his vegetable soup. Right. <laughs> I forgot. Well, you know, I don't much care for pizza. Hmm. And I've never really cared for rolls, <laughs> but I love pizza rolls. Oh, yeah, wow. wow. I kick a shine making a mess of pizza rolls. <laughs> nice. There's wholesome goodness in every bite when you think about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'll hang up and listen to you. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Floyd. Our answer is we agree. We that like them. Very useful. Very, very much. Uh, very pizza nice. rolls, molten lava in a pasta shell. I know. They're too hot ah. for you to stuff down your fat-ass throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 While they're cooling, just enjoy it. One of your entree tizers. <laughs> Christy has damaged. She has to wear glasses. Damaged her eyes, staring into the microwave. Yes. Counting oh, hungry. Count, Twenty yeah, seconds. Mama gotta eat. <laughs> Hurry up, microwave. Yes. Yes. Remember, remembers Christy's catchphrase. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, no. There you go. We're picking on Christy, or at least Josh was. Well, just an idiot. And uh, uh, I, I said we should go over to the uh, seesaw and have Josh and Christy get on it and uh, uh, someone uh, writes, uh, we'll call them A.W. Uh, the seesaw scene from Young Frankenstein is how I see Josh and Christy. On the seesaw. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. That's how I see it, too. <laughs> okay, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, talking about food, we've got uh, Jess Hooker, our official cooker, coming in today. All right. And we'll see what she's got going for us. In the meantime, I want to remind you about Hello Fresh. I'll give you a hint. She might have used the wind cooker. Oh, oh, okay. The air fryer? Oh, that's up. Oh, oh, wind oh, cooker. Oh, now, with the, what, what does HelloFresh do? Well, they do the shopping, they do the measuring, and they create the recipes. So the box arrives at your place. You just put it together. It can be a 10 minute thing, a 20 minute thing. It depends on what you're getting. You've got 50 choices, more than 50 every week. What kind of food do you like? I don't know, uh, family friendly or maybe uh, quick and easy or perhaps uh, low cal or low carb. They've got it all. Like I said, 50 different chef curated recipes every week. They're Mediterranean options. Very good, of course. Very healthy. Fresh mm -hmm. fruits and veggies, nuts and olive oils. Fiber-packed whole grains. Get all the details. Just check it out at HelloFresh.com slash BTShow16. Now, why the BTShow16? I don't want to confuse you. That's the code for 16 free meals plus three free gifts. Willie, what's the latest from HelloFresh? One of my favorites, the bruschetta chicken with mozzarella crust, bacon, mashed potatoes, and broccoli. HelloFresh is going to send you 10 ingredients. You put those together in six easy steps. And in just over a half hour, you have this delicious chicken dish from our friends at HelloFresh. Once again, that code is BT Show 16 like Bob Tom Show 16. Why? 16 free meals, three free gifts, hellofresh.com slash BT Show 16. Great for date night. 
<clears throat> have some fun. We'll do a little cooking together. That's BT Show 16 at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 16. Coming up, we have more stuff from the world of sports. We have a very interesting story about athletic shoes that cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You'll be very surprised why when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Jess Hooker from the Bits and Pieces podcast joining us here on a Tuesday at the Friggin' Mall building. And if you'd like to see more of Jess and hear more from her, the Bits and Pieces podcast can be found and downloaded for free at bobandtom.com slash podcast. The Bits and Pieces is a dive into the Bob and Tom archives, and they discuss some of our favorite bits and pieces from the show josh arnold a recent guest he was a big fan of the show before joining the sidekick chair and they talk about some of his favorite bits and pieces when he was growing up in st louis area listening to the bob and tom show and you can do the same by listening to the bits and pieces podcast at bob and slash podcast jess hooker on the way stay tuned I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update from the National Football League officials will meet this week with Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson as the league continues to investigate whether he violated its personal conduct policy. A person familiar with the plan spoke with the Associated Press yesterday. He's facing 22 civil lawsuits from massage therapists accusing him of sexual misconduct. Major League Baseball in the American League, your winners, Tigers beat Tampa Bay, Yankees, Boston, Toronto, Texas, White Sox, and Minnesota all win. The National League, Miami, the Cubs, Milwaukee, San Francisco, and the Dodgers get wins, and St. Louis at the Mets, that one postponed. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals starts tonight in Miami, the Heat hosting the Celtics. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. to bring you the constant variety of loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> the thrill of victory. <laughs> and the agony of defeat. But don't touch those. <laughs> Sorry. The human drama of loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> this is... The Bob and Tom Show. No shoes, no shirt, no talent. In the studio with us, comedian Mike McRae. I understand you're a big Indiana Jones guy, is that correct? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. That's my favorite movie series ever, man. Mm -hmm. And th those movies are always like, when I went to college, I would watch those all the time. I'd be like, like that would be the professor to have for sure. any kind of class. Because he just, every, you know, every semester he just, you know, takes off for three <laughs> or four weeks to save the world or <laughs> yep. find some Inca staff in Peru or something, you know. Like he walks into the first day. All right, class, my name is Dr. Indiana Jones. I'll be your professor for Archaeology 101. You know, his dad busts in the door, Junior. <laughs> dad, I'm teaching class here. <laughs> Junior, there's no time. We're all zombies about to uncover the sword of destiny in a vandalic horde in Tunisia. <laughs> Look, I can't just go chasing after some sword all the time. It's not just any sword, Junior. It's Balmung. Balmung. The legendary sword of Siegfried. <laughs> bestowed by his widow upon Theodoric the Ostrogoth before the slaughter of the Burgundians. <laughs> and then lost for a thousand years. The class is like, I don't know what he's talking about, but yeah, go find it. Go save the world. We'll be here when you get back. We'll be at the bar or the speakeasy or whatever they had back then. You know? be perfect. Class is parting afterwards. Hey, man, what did I tell you every semester? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> yeah.
You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Awful entertaining. Central Morning Radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. And uh, with us in the studio, we have a distinguished actor and comedian. He is John Witherspoon. My 11-year-old, you know, he's going to private school. Only reason to go to private school is that my mother-in-law helps pay half. Little rich kids go there. I see mm-hmm. one baby all the time. Oh, yeah? I see one baby there. He's and Annette Benny. And my son talks like this. Father... Father. Would <laughs> 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 you like a toddy? <laughs> Father, where we, my friends are going to Spain <laughs> for the summer. <laughs> where are we going? I said, Compton. Or somewhere <laughs> <laughs> Back to Detroit. Uh, <laughs> to Detroit. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to give you that two left boots with a high, one of them with a high heel. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but it turns out I'm, I don't I don't sleep well anyway. I've been grinding my teeth. Doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I didn't know mm, I grind bad. my teeth until mm. I woke up. My husband was pouring coffee beans into my mouth. <laughs> that was, what a weird way to save time in the no morning. No kidding, but it's fresh coffee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Jimmy Pardo. You recognize my voice from the show and my face from television. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. At the sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. He's manning the track phone hotline hot phone. There's Willie Griswold. Yo. In his Wisconsin Utter Tuggers t-shirt. Yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous piece of work. Ooh. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk. <laughs> and here's Tom. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. A lot to get to. Got another song coming out of Pat, I'm sure. The only sports Looking forward story. to that. I, I want to remind you that we haven't uh, done anything yet. Really. Pat's new album, Captured Live. Was number... I talking? <laughs> you introduced me, therefore I begin to speak. <laughs> um, oh, well, then don't introduce him. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, what if you never introduced him? <laughs> I think we cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go Pat's on. album called Captured Live, number two in the Amazon comedy chart right now, just released on Friday. And uh, let's see now. Once again, uh, Pat's got some gigs coming up, including uh, as yet to be announced special gig that uh, from a secret location. <laughs> but um, uh, I, w- I wanted to mention Josh and Willie. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, do you want a squeegee? <laughs> uh, no, I wanted to mention that Josh and Willie on the road this weekend. It's Catch a Tours, Ilian, New York, and uh, it's going to be Saturday night. Only a handful of tickets left. You're okay. going to get on. Really? Yes. Kill it. Yes. No, no, I, kill speaking it. of things that are Italian-esque, like cacciatores. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about SpaghettiOs. Oh. Sort of... Uh, Remember! Let's just see. American SpaghettiO. <laughs> That's right! Uh, uh, dear Bob and Tom Show, my cousin would eat SpaghettiOs out of the can cold first thing in the morning while waiting for the school bus. Wow. You guys know somebody that does that, too. Thank One you. of my brothers I loves the cold. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. You I, all I, know I, him. <clears throat> to, and, uh, this has been scientifically proven. Day-old spaghetti uh, is is deliciously great. For Have you reason. seen uh, the amazing, the wonderful, the uh, never-duplicated Alton Brown? He d- goes through a whole thing on that on his show about how the, the chemical compounds change after you cook it, and then it... Uh, overnight, there's something that happens to You take the pasta, take the sauce, mix them together, stick yep. them in the fridge for the night. Oh, it's good stuff. Good Absolutely. Stuff. I, um, now, once again, I happy happy right. anniversary SpaghettiOs, uh, born in 1965. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess it's time to return to the sports page. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman have met their ESPN co-workers for the first time as they prepare to take over the Monday Night Football booth. Both said yesterday they are excited about the challenge of doing something new after 20 seasons together at Fox. Aikman uh, had considered a deal with Amazon to call Thursday night games, but my boy, Herbie, Kirk Herbstreet, is doing the color commentary with uh, Al Michaels on Thursday night on Amazon. Uh, he, The logistics of that arrangement, though, with Amazon uh, caused Aikman to uh, zip over to ESPN and join him, join himself. They became uh, partners again, uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. And for my money, the best uh, football uh, broadcast team uh, working today. Do you want to do your, do you do your prediction about uh, Tom Brady's broadcast career? Uh-oh. I believe I told you that off the air. Uh-huh. In a uh, quiet uh, moment where we where we look into each other's eyes <laughs> right before the... No, I said uh, Drew Brees has announced that he is not uh, going to uh, be... Uh, a broadcaster any longer. He's not going to be a, a Sunday night football. Uh, he wanted to be in the booth during a game, and that is not. They don't have enough games at the NFL at uh, NBC, so he has been let out of his contract. 
And I said, I think Tom Brady, in my, I th- he obviously knows everything about football, and there's no argument. He's the best quarterback who ever lived so far with all the Super Bowl wins, because that's what it's all about. But I don't think he was going to be a very good broadcaster. I, I was alive when they p- tried to put Joe Montana in the booth, and it did not go well. It, and this I, is, is this analogous to the situation where sometimes the best players are not do not become the best coaches? Uh, uh, Can may, you give maybe, an, uh, yeah. Who's the ex- what's an example of the best player who became a really high quality broadcaster? A really high quality broadcaster that was a really good player. Mm. Oh, well, Troy Aikman's great. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. won he He's won your... three Super Bowls. Yeah. And I'm a Washington fan, and I love him in the booth. Bernie Federko, St. Louis Blue, was a fine uh, hockey uh, broadcaster. Bernie, Is he? Bernie, Bernie Federko. Uh, Federko. Federko. Yeah. Federko. Yeah. Federko. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he broadcast in English? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Of course, Tony Romo never won any championships, but uh, they're paying him seventeen million dollars a year to say this. Oh no, he's down, Jim. Oh, Jim. Oh, oh. And I don't know if you know that or not, but you see, uh, what's his name, Nance? Uh, he, what is it? Oh, he adds uh, to brilliant to, to this. He's down, Jim. Oh, Jim. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, Jim. Oh, he's a national treasure. Uh, yeah. I don't know why you're running that. Sorry, Nance. I'm sorry, oh. I'm up. Not anybody could just do that. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I could be in the booth. Why not? Am I bitter? Oh, yeah, Daddy. So saying, bitter. Was, oh. Your point is that Joe Montana was uh, less than stellar. Was I don't think it's stellar. fair to assume that uh, Tom would be then. I think what Tom is going to run into, Mr. Brady, is yes. that he's going to have so much in his brain that it's not going to come out in the burst that they need when you're doing a football game. And isn't he kind of vanilla? Just... He is a white man, yes, I, I, I know that's important. You, you know, like I can't that. say aren't you, about race with you. I can't say aren't you caramel. I can't say that. Yeah, this, I mean, come on. <laughs> He has uh, he has the podcast Tom Brady with Larry Fitzgerald and it's pretty good but it's not live you know and that's the whole thing about these broadcasts right. they're live you got to be quick and in the moment and I don't know about Tom's this personality that we all kind of sort of have uh, in different levels of it I don't know if Tom has that but I mean he's able to distill what's happening on a football point. field better than anyone in history maybe he well, can also no, articulate I, well, that on the podcast I think but. Peyton would would beautifully move into the uh, color commentary and uh, mm. move right right into the booth he's got his thing which i like even more that, What's ca- that? that, that casual kind of two guys watching oh, on a yeah. couch yeah they started a whole new broadcast I mean, sector 20 years from now they may have 30 different options for play-by-play sure chick is the a uh, thursday night amazon game is that only going to be available on amazon uh i believe so yeah, yeah. i do yeah. not like when they do that some yeah. of these things i think are so much, not so much a privilege, but a right for people to be able to watch free broadcast TV, wow. and I think the NFL is one of them. It's a right to be able to watch anything you want to, whenever you want to, but... Uh, you gotta pay. Is it, though? I think th- that's not fair. No, you should be able to go to any bar in whatever city you're in and turn on Thursday Night Football, and that's You should not... be able to sit yeah. in your home and be able to turn yeah. it through, so that, that kids can watch it. Well, you will be able to, as long as you pay Amazon. I know. Yeah. I just don't... I don't like when they take away things like well, the Peanuts uh, holiday and Of course, uh, I, I don't have any beef with Amazon. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm they, talking to my phone. Everything's fine. The, the, the current uh, uh, logic on this is you're going to probably see a lot of the uh, a lot of the Netflix-like networks adding commercials so they can have a lower fee. Well, Netflix is definitely talking about to that. To get because in because a, pe- not abysmal every, quarter, people but. can't people can't afford forty different you know whatever Disney Pluses, et cetera, et cetera, right, et cetera. Right. It's getting to the point. There's so much out there. There's too much out there. It's you, you can't follow it all. You, you can't even... We'll get offers to do interviews with people of shows I've never heard of on networks I've never heard of. So uh, time now to return to the sports page with Mr. McGee. Have you missed anything? Uh, going to a big league ball game can be exciting. We all know that. Major League Baseball, there's like a dog and a beer at the ballpark. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, man. man. If you're in St. Louis, an $18 beer, beer, of course. Yeah, that's right. It's the only stadium that has the overpriced. <laughs> but uh, in this food. case... <laughs> A fan going to a game had some real excitement before he even got to the ballpark. Uh, Eli, E-L-Y, Eli. Eli's coming? Hudis said he was walking on a footbridge to the Tiger game when part of the bridge collapsed and he fell 15 feet to the ground underneath. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said he landed about six feet from traffic below the footbridge. God. But he said he dusted himself off, reported the incident to police, and went on to see his beloved Tigers. Aw. This happened on May 9th, but the bridge was still open until the Detroit (laughs) News asked state transportation officials about it Sunday. Uh, You know... 
people are falling through that bridge. <laughs> they said they weren't aware of the problem until the newspaper told them about it. Was there a hole in the bridge? Uh, Michigan. No, he was walking across the footbridge, and part of it gave way, and he Man. fell to the ground, and just like the story So there said, must have been a hole afterwards. Yes, there was probably a hole afterwards, just like well, I just Well, if the bridge said, fell onto the freeway... The bridge it? didn't fall onto the freeway. The guy did. <laughs> what through a, the bridge. How big is just this guy? Just like the story. Is this guy he like Happy Humphrey? 460 pounds. <laughs> Also, he's like Christie's weight. <laughs> yep, that's right. No, 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 no nobody's that fat. No, oh, nobody Christie's. I know we're having. She's hungry. <laughs> this is going to come back to bite us in the ass. I'm sure. Oh, I could only imagine the comments on <laughs> social media right now. How's Josh? Josh, Josh. <laughs> oh, some of this is comedy, folks. Why don't you relax? <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll play special music when it isn't. Blatant hostilities in full bloom this morning. Uh, legendary WWE wrestler Ric Flair. <laughs> Woo! is set to wrestle one final match this July. Okay. Put a ramp up. Boy, you you yeah, don't know who oh you... you yeah, get on the bad side of the wrestling fans. And now Go Tom ahead. Angers, <laughs> yeah. wrestling fan. You uh, you like the wrestling. You like Flair, right? My oh, favorite. sure. He's been, he's, I didn't know he was your favorite. He's yeah. been here. Uh, is he 72 or 74? He's 73. 73 years old. Okay. Yeah. Uh, known as Nature Boy, of course, he'll enter the ring at the Nashville Fairgrounds on an independent card that will stream live on Fight TV. Yes, that's F-I-T-E, Fight TV. Wow. Huh. It's not yet uh, clear who the opponent will be. Flair said in the statement to ESPN, I'm going to walk that aisle one last time. They are <laughs> once and for all... <laughs> he sure is having fun. Yeah, he is. <laughs> to be the man, to beat the man, to be the man, you got to beat, beat the man. That's, That's right. right, Flary. The two-time WWE <laughs> Hall of Famer. How can you be in the Hall of Fame twice? That doesn't make that sense. Doesn't Probably sense. for two different leagues, I would imagine. That's dumb. Is he part of a team, tag team? Oh, he may have been. Was he ace? Six, yeah, with Tully Brent. 16-time oh. world champ has not wrestled in a match since September of 2011. About for uh, um, against longtime rival Sting. Man, this, uh, you know what? This I liked is him much be better when he really was Really cool police. or very <laughs> sad. Yeah. I, I can't. I watched some video of him rehearsing, I mean, practicing. Mm -hmm. His last match, 2008 at WrestleMania 24 against Shawn Michaels. They haven't announced who it's going to be. It might be that guy, The Undertaker. Not the wrestler. <laughs> Again, oh boy. Gotta watch that. You're getting on the wrong side just, of the nerves. I, I just want to shout his oh, license plate. God. Don't you? <laughs> hey, hey, come here, Marjorie. There's that guy. Who, he was dissing Ric Flair. Uh, Nature boy, give me that tire iron. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, he's a legend. His daughter's a hell of a wrestler, too. Yeah, yeah, Felicia. Felicia, Felicia Flair. Flair. That's right. <laughs> I'm looking right. Now we're going to get letters. We all know it's Claire. Claire Flair. <laughs> Wasn't she Woo! in too? She was in here. She yeah. was in uh -huh. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it'll be fun. But uh, what, what, what's the date on it? Uh, I don't. I don't know. You got the, the story right there in front of you. You're reading along. Why don't you look for it? No, I don't actually. <laughs> Video of a man <laughs> reading about. <laughs> You're listening to another show again, aren't you? Reading about Major Harrison. Oh, uh, Major uh, Applegate from Texas. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Back July's uh, doesn't okay. give a day. Whoever put this slap this story. Well, good together. for Flair, man. That's a, 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 it'll be a good way to go out. Nature boy. Yeah. Well, at his age, nature call boy. They better have like an intermission so he can go take a leak. <laughs> Everybody pees, <laughs> as REM once sang. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here's something draft. you might like, Tom, he said, hopefully. <laughs> Video of a man golfing on the side of a Florida interstate, 75, has surfaced on social media. <laughs> According to NBC2, we have news. Also, Jose, <laughs> Jose and Catherine Rodriguez, who document everyday life for their YouTube channel, Southern Life, were driving down I-75 when they spotted the man on the side of the road golfing. Oh, boy. A they're, maniac. They're, we'll play where it lays, folks. I'm not taking a penalty. Right. I'm not a very good golfer. Hey, Tom, how many, uh, how many lanes were on this highway the guy was golfing next to? 
Uh, uh, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, what'd you shoot today? Uh, 75. No, no, Interstate 75. I, uh, you know how dangerous that would be? Jose and, yeah. Jose and Catherine Rodriguez of Southern Life on YouTube. Uh, their dash camera captured video of the scene. Jose said, we're driving down the road. We see this guy on the side of the road. Jose? Howdy. Jose? Jose, oh, can God. you see? <laughs> Oh, by the oh, Jose, can you Don't see? Don't sing it. Don't start. We already gave you the treatment on that one. I looked over when you said that at Josh, and it looked like his dog just died. He was just... <laughs> we, see this, we see this guy, Jose said, we see this guy on the side of the road having a full golf game. I don't know what that means, other than he has a club and a bag and a ball, I guess. I don't, he's just standing on the side it's of the road. It's a major, major highway. Well, yeah, it is. It's idiot. A huge highway. Yeah, you mind if I play through? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, was, it was probably a drunk John Daly because there was a Hooters off the exit ramp. <laughs> <sighs> Could have been worse. Could have been bowling. <laughs> I don't think that's worse. <laughs> I mean, it's probably it's, safe, it's probably safer when you consider all those alligators at the Florida courses. Yeah. Uh, wow. What an idiot. Wow. Hit somebody's windshield. Yeah, this is not a good oh, idea. Definitely not going to hook. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, is that uh, oh, uh, here we go. Stupid world record. A man in the United Kingdom has broken a Guinness world record after traveling across Great Britain on a foot-powered skewter in 11 days, a distance of over 900 miles. Wow. The Falkirk Herald reports that Stuart Jameson broke the previous record for... Traver, traveling from Land's End to John O'Groats by 10 full days. He completed the journey on a scooter named Big Blue Magoo by his 13 year old <laughs> daughter, Beth. All right. Evidence of the attempt will be submitted to Guinness for verification. <laughs> uh, scooter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's 11, fun. 11 days across Great, Great Britain. Yeah, well. I think was, there was some charity component to this. Big cool. Blue Magoo. I like Big Blue Magoo. Do you? Yeah. Good name. Good name for a scooter. Yeah. I <laughs> think. Have you ever used a scooter? Sure. Like a Vespa? <laughs> no, no. This is a this what is are a you? foot powered scooter. What are you? Uh, what are you implying there, Josh? Uh, using a scooter? They have to reinforce it. Is that what you're saying? No, I. I you snap it right in half. Is that what? You... At a scooter. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I've used a scooter. <laughs> they had to use monster truck tires. Is that what you're saying? I didn't, I'm not saying anything. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Is it scoot? Yeah. <laughs> it scooted but just be, fine. If you think about it, that's you're powering it with just the one foot, right? Yeah, but you can switch. You can switch. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking this is like his right ass cheek would be just oh, like, a, like well, a maybe rock. He's, after. Maybe he's not seated. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, really? No, he's, he's not, not seated no, for sure. No, it looks like a standing well, what's bicycle. Wrong, well, you what's just, your ass cheek got to do with anything? Because you're just using your right leg for, what is it, did you say 10 days or something and crossing the UK? Yeah, you can switch legs. You'd want to do okay, well, just, just curious. Um, and he's not wearing a helmet, I notice. So maybe they'll we'll have to do a... Scootathon for this guy for the brain injury he suffers when he gets hit by a truck. <laughs> you know, yeah. all right. Keeping it light this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we? Nice cute little story. Hey, another world record, he said, desperately changing the topic. As long uh, as it's not about David Rush. David Rush is broken. Oh, no. <laughs> broken the Guinness World Record for the most t shirts worn during a half marathon. No, you, you have, this is one you have to see the picture. Nope, don't nope. care. David right. donned a total of 111 t shirts to beat the previous record. Of 82. But that's too many shirts. And then Jim. he ran a half marathon. Boy, that is something. You got to see the picture. He it, what's, it, it, he I'll, looks like a turtle. <laughs> His little tiny head. I'll be just out. fine never seeing yeah. that picture. Yeah, I'll be just fine. <laughs> You've got to see this picture, Josh. <laughs> you have to <laughs> see the picture. Have you seen this? Yeah. No, here, see it, Christy. 11 shirts, huh? It, look, it looks like, he's, <laughs> he's, like his arms are sticking out like he's. Big bl blowing up. Boy, that's something. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. the odor? Well, <laughs> this is ridiculous. What if there were an emergency? How could, if he had like a heart emergency, <laughs> they'd have to take a chainsaw to break through those. They, yeah. You couldn't get him off in time. He looks very silly. Yeah. And, and uh, that has to hurt. Yeah. His arms are stuck out like this. Yeah, the real hero is the antiperspirant. He's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be right. Uh, well, okay. Um, what if he got knocked over? He just bounced. We're not that lucky. <laughs> I don't think he could get up. 
they don't have to have uh, assistance. He looks. Uh, he, what's the guy's name? Uh, Ralphie's brother in a Christmas story. Yeah. When they, oh, when they get him all in jacket. Yeah, they put him in those coats. Yeah, he goes. Mm-hmm. I can't put my arms down. Yeah. Uh, coming up, is that sports? Yes. Uh, coming up in the news, Christy. What have you got? Uh, well, we have some incredibly expensive sneakers in the news. We have a Johnny Cash story you don't want to miss, and we have a plane drawing uh, "Make Beer Not War" in his flight path. Oh, there's that story. <laughs> Don't bury the lead. <laughs> She's hungry. <laughs> oh, Pat. I, God, are you going to get your car keyed? <laughs> she gave me a look. <laughs> also coming... And Arby's you know in what? the news, and I love Arby's, you know and I'm going to eat three roast beefs today. If you key, okay. if you key uh, Pat's car, I will help you. <laughs> I'm not going to key anybody's okay, car. All right. I will be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. And I'm not stupid. I know there's more to life than just sex. It's just none of those other things feel as good as sex. I mean, I love cookies. Oh, yeah. But if I do not have access to cookies, I will not rent a movie and watch two other people eat cookies. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect stranger. Uh (laughs) Eating cookies. No. Nothing. No. Uh How do you not think about sex? Everything on TV, sex, you know, all the commercials, very beautiful women in all the commercials now. It doesn't even matter what the product is. It's just very sexual. Mm -hmm. And then you finally have sex, and it's it's kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. Where's my Sprite, my new car? (laughs) (laughs) That's why I think women should have shelves next to their bed filled with prizes, depending on how well you did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a good idea. Like they do at the carnival. Uh Sure. They have something to shoot for, you know. (laughs) Are you going to take anything on (laughs) Right. I'm going to go for the Van Halen mirror tonight. (laughs) All day, all night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Rolling through a Tuesday morning. It is the 17th of May. My name is Mark Allison. Thanks so much for joining us here on Bob and Tom 24-7 on this Tuesday morning. Hope you're having a great day. On the way this weekend, Donnie Baker going to be at the Blue Room in Springfield, Missouri, beginning Thursday night through Saturday. That's the 19th through the 21st. Also coming up this weekend, what else do we got going? Well, looky here. Willie Griswold going to be upstairs at the Helium Ballroom right there. The Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis coming up on Thursday, May 26th. This Saturday, the 21st, however, he'll be at Cacciatore's with Josh Arnold. That's in Ilian, New York, and you can find out more at thatjosharnold.com. Josh would prefer, I say, that Josh is appearing at Cacciatore's and Willie will be joining him, so we'll settle with that. But again, you can go to that Josh Arnold. Dot com if you live there in New York and you'd like to catch them at Catchatories. Again, Elion, New York. And sure, I may be mispronouncing the name, and I apologize. I just read copy here at the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, I can read some copy. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Coldplay wants you, the fan, to help energize their show, literally, The band's going to install special dance floors and energy-storing stationary bikes at stops on their latest world tour. They're going to ask you to help power the show as you dance or pedal along to the music. It's part of the band's pledge to be as energy-sustaining as possible and create a lower-carbon footprint even when they tour. 
The team song encourages folks to meet the Mets. So when Shakira took them up on that offer, it turned out well for both sides. The Colombian board singer and her son Mylan were invited by the team to Saturday's game against Seattle. The team's Twitter feed has posted several pictures of them with Mets players like pitcher Max Scherzer, outfielder Travis Jankowski, infielder Eduardo Escobar, and manager Buck Showalter. Shakira says some players asked her to sign baseballs for them. She says next time she's going to ask players to sign the guitars for her. And Brandi Carlisle, Allison Russell, and Yola are the leading nominees for the 2022 American Honors and Awards. Each of the three artists has a shot at the top three awards, Album of the Year, Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year. Other nominees for the Artist of the Year are Jason Isbell and Billy Strings. The winners are going to be announced September 14th at a ceremony in Nashville. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD, just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 now to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you everything I touch turns to sold. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. No matter how hard I try, can't keep my hands off my feet. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. Brand new feature, Biff Whiskey, Frontier Lifeguard. As told by Arnie Whiskey, Frontier Golfer. I should have known. Well, you know, I was a, was a man about town and yeah, also at the uh, Whiskeyville Country Club and Salad Bar. Of course, the country club, we have our very own swimming pool. And, of course, we had to have a lifeguard for the youngsters here. Well, we heard a young fellow named Biff Whiskey. And he was the lifeguard, you know, at the pool. Well, this young fellow walks up to Biff and he goes, Excuse me, Biff, but uh, what's the best way to teach a girl to swim? And Biff says, Come here, young fella. He goes, Now, here's how it's done. First, you walk her slowly into the water. All right. Mm -hmm. Then you put your arms gently around her waist. Then you... uh rub your hands delicately up and down her arms. Mm -hmm. Then you just gotta lean over and softly kiss her on the neck. The young fella says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm teaching my sister. He goes, on that case, just push her in the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Except in Kentucky. <laughs> Jeez. I knew I should have held my uh, ears yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thus concludes another A exciting quick episode. episode of Biff, Biff Whiskey, Whiskey Frontier, Frontier Lifeguard. Idiot. I've show. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee is at the <laughs> news desk. <laughs> Yep. You doing all right? You okay? I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, Christy's hungry. <laughs> feed her. Feed her. Don't get near her teeth. <laughs> there's, there's Pat Godwin. Hello. Got to have his car key later. Is by Sherman? Christy. Feed me Sherman. What is that? No. Seymour. 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 That was it. Feed me Seymour. Feed me Seymour. The fabulous <laughs> Levi Stubbs is the voice. Of the oh, yeah, the great. late Levi Stubbs. Oh, he's yeah. Four tops. Levi. There's uh, Josh Arnold. He's the sidekick chair. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. At the SpaghettiOs desk, somehow. Also manning the track phone hotline hot phone. There's Willie Griswold. If Christy's hungry, boy, do I have a letter. Oh, oh do you I really? Oh, oh, I can't I'm wait. Chick McGee with uh, three uh, emails, and here's uh, Tom. This all started with uh, the anniversary of SpaghettiOs yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, born in, what, was it 1965? Turns out that Ace keeps SpaghettiOs here at the station. <laughs> oh. uh, and he brought a can in to show us. Um, I'm a pasta fan. I'm not a big SpaghettiOs eater, I'll be honest with it's you. It's a good friend of the show, Tony Stewart's his favorite food. Okay. He'll tell you that. Certainly He'll got his eat place. It, uh, okay. for every meal. He um, loves SpaghettiOs. Yeah, and we've, we've, all, we've gone around the horn on this. If you could only eat one thing for every meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? And me, for me, it would be spaghetti. Josh, you said what, peanut butter and jelly? That's correct. Christy, you said... Uh, uh, popcorn, but I'm kind of changing my mind on that. Oh, what are you thinking what's, about what's changing new, to? Uh, I think it might be pizza. Yeah. I found a new pizza that I love. Fat. She served this uh, at her little uh, party Sunday. It, it's delicious. It's oh, amazing. Oh, it's really good pizza. What's yeah. on it? 
A uh, roasted red pepper sauce, grilled chicken, various toppings, mozzarella, yeah, and arugula. Okay, because <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking like arugula, pineapple. Uh, no pineapple. R- road no, I had, and for pebble. instance, something <laughs> something interesting. I had the one with the pepperoni and cheese, <laughs> and then I had one that was a meat lovers. So yes. I'm not sure what that was, but <laughs> they good. were both very good. I'm sorry. So we have letters. What are we doing here? Uh, hello, fellow <laughs> fat. Hello, fellow fat guys, Josh and Willie and the rest of the gang. Hi. I run with my local volunteer fire department. We were dispatched for a tractor-trailer fire on I-80. When we arrived, we saw stuff popping off and spewing all over the place. Once the fire was out, we found out that the trailer was full of soups and SpaghettiOs. No No kidding. Guys were digging towards the center (laughs) of pallets and cracking open and eating SpaghettiOs and ravioli while we were cleaning the mess up. All right. That was... That was a delicious fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Already kind of preheated in yeah. the can. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Thanks, and keep up the great entertainment. Oh, well, thank you. Robert. I really do love that great. canned ravioli. I I'm just surprised love by it. that. The uh, uh, Ace, Ace does the SpaghettiOs, do you have to have a can opener, or does it have the pop, pop top? Has the pop top open? Oh, so you can just hobo it wherever you're at? <laughs> yes. Right Did hobos rain. always carry a can opener? They had to. Yeah, they usually had one in their bindle. Did yeah. they? You know, oh, church okay. key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, Josh, do you like the regular uh, ravioli or the overstuff? I'm unaware of the overstuff. Oh. Everybody sit and shut oh, up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, you almost just, if you would have looked over here, just seen a spinning hat in my chair <laughs> as I ran out the door. Uh, dear idiots and Christy. Hi. The nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! is in the Hall of Fame twice because he went in as the 16-time world champion and as a singles, res- singles wrestler and then again as a member of the legendary stable, the Four Horsemen. Oh, of course. Not as a tag team. Of with course. A, uh, Tully Branchard as Ace so idiotically. I didn't finish. No, no, Ace didn't claim that that's why. He, I just asked <laughs> if he was part of a tag team. This is signed. Woo! Oh, Chris. All right. And good morning, idiots. Uh, and Chris, every morning I take my two daughters to school. We listen every morning. The girls love the show. We have incorporated one of Chick and Josh's most famous and hilarious con- running gags on the show. There's a teacher at the school named Mrs. Rich. <laughs> Each morning we uh, <laughs> sitting there. She pulls into the parking lot and the girls say, hey, Dad, I bet she's rich. <laughs> and I say... No, sweetie. Her last name is Rich. <laughs> and it's always funny, Tom. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's from Andy. Well, I think if they if the girls had to pick one of your little bits, that's probably the safest. <laughs> yes. You know what? My mom didn't call me yesterday on my birthday. She didn't? She texted me and said, I'm going to call you later. Never did. Oh, wow. Is she taking classes from the Tom Griswold School of Because <laughs> that's a classic. Maybe she, uh, you know, couldn't reach the phone from her back. You, you know, know what I mean? Huh? Wow. Hey. He was getting got, laid. Got a little, getting laid, little baby. Little, could we move on? Uh, uh, Willie has a letter. Willie? Yeah, you said you don't like the, uh, the hot dog bun style burgers. This is Brian, who's a genius. He says, I use brat buns for my burgers, cut 16-ounce cheddar cheese lengthwise into four pieces, cover cheese with ground beef, and wrap in bacon. Grill and apply oh barbecue God. sauce at the end and place brat on bun. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah, my point was sometimes when you don't have any hamburger buns, you end up having to make <laughs> length. Uh, uh, you, you, you shape the hamburger meat like a hot dog and have to eat it that way. Why not just make spaghetti? What? Okay. You're browning? No, no. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. Tom. I, 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 Tom, now I, I, I will you know, do something? Do. Please. Tom, we, we've been telling you for a couple years now. He's hard to talk to. It's, it's unbelievable. Not only that, no, he's difficult uh, off the air. He's uh, never wrong. Uh, so, so, Ace. He I've, drives us all crazy. Ace, let me walk you Why through is this, he here? Ace. We're having a grill out. I've got the grill. The charcoal's ready to go. Oh, my God. I go in and notice there are no hamburgers. You can't bars. reason with it. You didn't say grilling. You just said making hamburgers. There there you go. Well, I make mine in my stove. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, you can. Oh, I don't have any buns. You can. Let me ground this ground beef up and make spaghetti. I well, not all of us live in the depression. <laughs>
No, no, the idea is cans. The <laughs> idea is you're having burgers. You've got you're ready to have burgers. You're not gonna. I'm, I'm, we're gonna get a letter from some guy. I always make my pasta on the grill. Uh, <laughs> I do. You, How no, long would no, it take if, to water the boil? If you've never made spaghetti on the grill, you're missing. Okay. There, there has. To, we should make a fake video. How to make spaghetti on a grill? There, I mean, you might be able to make it. Yeah, but it would take on a for griddle. ever for the water. You probably have to. Boil. You, 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 no, there's no water. For the no, no, there's no water. No, no. You just put it on the grill. Hey, you soak your noodles in beer over there. <laughs> when you put the when you put the spaghetti on the grill, you got to put it crossways. <laughs> don't fall through the hose. To the grid, or it falls that through. That was my problem originally. I was doing it vertically. Yes, if you're using a Weber, <laughs> you got to have the spaghetti go crossways. Well, Brian, that's a hell of a recipe. Oh Thank gosh. you for sharing okay, that. Okay, well, okay. yeah. Uh, now, on that topic, uh, we have uh, we have this from uh, John writes. One night, I made burgers shaped like hot dogs because we ran out of burger buns. Like Tom said, we had no other option. As they were cooking, they shrank down and Evelyn started to look like turds in the pan. And my yeah. wife started laughing so yeah. hard she peed her trousers. Yes, okay. they would look like that. Wait a minute, did he type trousers? Or did you add that? Yeah, that's, that's you. Hey, look, he wanted to type it in Tommy's. Yes, is so he, Tom would read is it. Is he a time traveler? Is he using the word trousers? He knew better. One was, evening, yeah. Mrs. Piddled her trousers. Yeah. 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 Which, which trousers. once again reminds me, I can't find the trousers to my tux. That's a weird thing that, that, is. You, that you lost the pants. They don't normally it's get separated. It, but you don't see it as you hey, lost the pants. Don't you hey. hang the pants on the same hanger as the jacket inside hey, the... That's thing, what you do. I lost Thank a you. pair of pants. Turned out it was at a broad's house. Am I right, yeah. Josh? <laughs> How many times has that happened? Chick is Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you another question. <laughs> So I should just wear black jeans with my uh or black my, my pants. New with my no. tux. No. Oh. Here it comes, here it comes. Michael Penn, what should I wear? What a great like a song. Wuthering Heights uh, <laughs> reference in an 80s pop song. Yeah. Oh, doesn't he have Sisyphus in there somewhere, <laughs> yeah, too? Great song. Michael Penn, No, no Myth. Um, I'm playing it because it mentions black jeans, and I've got to find a pair of trousers for my talks. Okay. Is because can you buy just tux pants? Well, you better hurry yes, you up can. if you need them by Saturday. Uh, when I was in show choir, we didn't buy the full tuxes. We had tux pants. <laughs> now, when you were in show I thought you wore a tutu. <laughs> well, that was for yeah. a special yeah. number I did, just for my teacher. Uh, hey, uh, Hooker, he loved it. Hooker the cooker coming up. We got we got we got, we got crazy alligators in the news. We got a snack coming up and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. More Bob and Tom next. State law. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. So, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a uh, married guy? No, I, I just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? <laughs> oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. First time you ever told a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide. and Get that diabolical grin on their face. <laughs> 
you can almost feel them saying, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. This has been Chick McGee speaking. Thank you, Chick McGee speaking. I'm Mark Allison speaking, and we're rolling through a Tuesday morning. Jess Hooker, Hooker the Cooker on the way, and you are tuned in to Bob and Tom 24-7. Where else would you be? Where else would you rather be but right here, right now, listening to us, huh? Hey, for everything Bob and Tom, check out BobandTom.com. That's our website, folks, and that's where you can find the Bob and Tom Show puppets. Smack Tom, the latest rendition. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check it out. Before it goes away. Oh, that's right. These Pop and Tom Show puppets aren't forever, ladies and gentlemen. You got to check them out while you get a chance because before you know it, they'll be gone. Well, not really. We'll probably uh, pound them into the ground. But it'll be fun watching the Pop and Tom Show puppets, and you can check out more of everything Bob and Tom right there where? That's right. BobandTom.com. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison. With things you may have missed, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has given the strongest hint yet he would like to pay less for Twitter than his $44 billion offer made last month. Musk told a Miami Technology Conference a viable deal at a lower price would not be out of the question. Also at the All In Summit, Musk estimated at least 20% of Twitter's 229 million accounts are spam bots, a percentage he said was at the low end of his assessment. The appearance came a few hours after Musk began trolling Twitter CEO Paraj Agrawal, who posted a series of tweets explaining the company's effort to fight bots and how it's consistently estimated less than 5% of Twitter accounts are fake. Someone new is joining the ranks of fitness enthusiasts who monitor the number of steps they take each day with Fitbits and other fitness tracking devices. Only Helen isn't human. She's a 30-year-old white rhino at Walt Disney World. Helen went out into the savannah at the Kilimanjaro Safaris attraction at Animal Kingdom on Monday wearing a fitness device all day. The purpose to gather data on the number of steps she takes each day, whether she's walking, running, or sleeping, and which part of the man-made savannah she favors the most. Technology there at Disney. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Some like Bob, some like Schmitz, but for me, it's... Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7. Brigamal Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic Moment in history. The year was 1896. Uh -oh. The place just outside of Athens, near the town of Stacton Topless, Greece, <laughs> while preparing for the first modern Olympics, organizers were forced to eliminate a track and field event. <laughs> in what will surely go down as the biggest bloodbath in Olympic history. Oh. Runners from five teams were injured at the initial time trials of the 100-meter razor hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> Five athletes would never mm. compete again. Uh. However, Austrian hurdler Klaus Kleinendorfer went on to be a silver medalist for the women's team as Gretchen Kleinendorfer. Oh, thank you very much for this. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, <coughs> thank you for this medal. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Sound like Paul Hummett. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Boy.
Better get up, get your master's hat. Essential morning radio all day and all night. You might as well shoot me when the beer runs out. Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Stronger than dirt. Shut oh up. Oh, my gosh. And remember, Christy, Christy's B.O. Christy. is stronger than dirt. I thought it was just fat. Now I stink too. Well, they kind of go hand in hand. Christy, uh, oh <laughs> what's your new uh, catchphrase? Christy. I'm hungry. <laughs> this is Ace's fault. He brought the SpaghettiOs. No, this is Josh's fault. It is. I started this silly joke. and uh, Sorry. No, this taking is my, the nation by uh, storm. It's my uh, dad's fault because he bullies you so much. Now you got to bully Christy. Oh, I'm not really bullying her. You know what? You guys are going to be bullying each other. Uh, they'll, they'll be bullying each other. That's right. We've got Josh Arnold and Willie G at Catch a Tours. Only a handful of tickets left. It's an Illy in New York coming up this Saturday night. Should be a killer show. I'm sorry. Back to the introductions. You can take anything and make it a plug, can't you? Is that a. Is and that you know what? How thank, about thank a butt? You. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Just as I was about to thank him. <laughs> the old butt plug. Was that a butt plug joke? <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Pat Godwin's in the performance room. That's oh. Josh Arnold. Uh, Hi. Jess Hooker joins us. Hi. Hooker the cooker. She's uh, whipped up something for us in the wind cooker, Tom. You remember? You have a wind cooker. A vision in pink today. Yes. yes. Yeah, but it's not. Um, Here we go. The same pink that it was last time. It's it not Titty sorry. Pink. Titty Pink is a little lighter than and that is wearing. That is spelled T-I-D-Y. T-I-D-Y. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now, this is more of a putty pink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not That's aware of that. P-O-O-D-Y. Right, 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 right. 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 I'm not aware of that. <laughs> okay. right. As opposed to a Zapruder Pink, which was three weeks ago. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> three decades ago. <laughs> three? Yeah. yeah. Six. Six. Gosh, I love living in the 80s. There's Ace Cosby. Hi. Hi. There's Willie Griswold. I'm Chick McGee. Here's Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see now. We've got a lot to get to. Uh, speaking of plugs, uh, number two in the Amazon comedy charts, ladies and gentlemen, it's Pat Godwin's A Captured Live album. Now, that's uh, in English, right? Uh, yes. There are, many, there are many versions. I did a French version. Huh. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you now? The the French Galata version, has? huh? Yeah, that show, uh, I remember when you did that French show live, uh, kind of bombed in Wichita. <laughs> 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 well, uh, where was I? Um, <clears throat> oh, I know. Uh, we were completing our sportscast. Is that correct? Nope. Is it, it's, it's done. Yep. Okay, good to know. Well, there's a shoe story <laughs> that I thought we should do for Mr. McGee. Since My he's, shoe. Uh, Chick has been, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Marie condoing your uh, I don't, shoe collection? Um, uh, yeah. I, 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 Carrying it down a little. A couple times in the past six months, I've taken many, many shoes. Over Hundreds. Give shoes. them away. Yes. Okay. Give them away. And then you're a size 12. Should have sold them. Size 12. As am I. You feel good about that? Should have sold them. Huh? Does it feel good to give things away and no. knowing you're making some? It feels better to sell them, make money. One happy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, now this is. Um, this is a, a, a story of interest. I think this will find Josh especially. I'm eager will, to uh, hear what luxury shoe this was. Luxury Fashion House Balenciaga <laughs> is selling semi... Hey, slow down. What's it called? Balenciaga. Balenciaga. It's is this like a Louis Vuitton? Yeah, it's an it's Italian, Italian house. Italian uh, shoemaker. Mm -hmm. Rappers talk about it a lot. Is selling semi-destroyed sneakers for $1,850. Images released as part of the new campaign show the shoes in an extreme state of disrepair. The rubber soles chipped off, while the canvas is tattered Should to, be. to shreds and muddled. Muddled? Muddied. The sneakers feature what Balenciaga describes as rippings all over the fabric. According, Oh, it's a Paris-based fashion house. I thought it was Italian, oh, so was how much Italian, I am. Yeah. Only 100 pairs of extra-destroyed sneakers will be available to buy is, um, for $1,850. Poverty chic. Eighteen hundred and fifty dollars yeah. per pair, mm -hmm. or the lot? No, just for a pair. They, they what look, do they normally go? Did the, you did you guys have lake shoes growing up or creek shoes? Yes, absolutely. Yes. I still do. That's still exactly do. what these shoes look. Oh, like. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But they've got the whatever the Basquiat crappy writing on the side kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, they they're as you mentioned tattered should do be. Mm -hmm. Tom, does it say how much they normally go for? It, it just looks oh, like a pair. Of, looks like a pair of Chuck Taylors that you threw yeah. into a garbage dumpster for a year. Didn't answer my question. Um, you could have just said, I don't know. I don't know if there's an un <laughs> I wasn't listening to your film. question because I, I don't think there's on. another version of the shoe. Yeah. Oh, I see. This yeah. is a whole well, they have. Of... They do sell tennis shoes. I can get you. But there's, oh, 
Oh, are these purposefully? Yes. yes. That's yes. The whole yes. I am That's so, I am so sorry. Think, I thought, uh, think jeans being sold with holes in yeah, them. Yeah, okay, I apologize. Yeah, I thought, they're, they're complete. This is like poverty See, porn. like this. I got you, Tom. Yes. I apologize. It's like yeah. poverty porn. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, manual labor, how, oh, how chic. But they do have regular yeah, acres. It, it is that thing. Okay. Well, I think Kanye started this. His line is very, I don't know, prison-ish and, and poverty. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So they yeah. look worn? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind if of If you want look. these for yourself, take, your, take a pair of Chuck Taylors, rub them in ground beef, and give them to my dog. <laughs> it is. You don't even have to do that with my dog. Just sit him on the floor. A couple you know? days later. <laughs> Are they going to... I mean, it's sad to me that homeless people aren't profiting from the uh, ideas that designers are now stealing from them. Talk about uh, cultural theft. This this really is poverty chic. And I believe you mean people who are uh, currently without home. Oh yeah, you can, yeah, the word homeless is now okay. Well, they're it, one, that one, one way or another, these poor people are <laughs> in trouble. Uh, it, this is completely ridiculous. Yeah, that's what they. Look I think like. they look kind of cool. They do look kind of cool, but actually, for that price, right. it's ridiculous. And you're right. Tom, I wish you they, get the I same wish they effect. were brighter, so we could have snipers pick the people off that are wearing them. In oh Paris, my goodness! As they walk down the Champs Elysees, just that put a seems, bullet through their skull. Oh, Jake, I don't think he's a fan. Excessive. He's not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Willie, what's that other brand of shoe that has the star on it? It's not Converse, but it looks oh, really uh, tattered. Bathing Ape. What is it? Bathing, bathing, bathing Ape or Persol or... Something like that. Something like everybody's that. doing this. Everybody has a line of shoes yeah. that look like they've been worn Yeah, it's been going years. on forever. When yeah. I was a kid, it was the Abercrombie and Fitch jeans that yeah. had the tears in them. And Sure, yeah. I mean, you got your faded leather and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hmm. I'm pretty sure you've probably bought a that's pair a of shoes. That's a mighty <laughs> price tag. 1850 yeah. yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, it's a whole destroyed line they have. They have the destroyed hoodies, destroyed mm -hmm. t-shirts. Yeah, they, I'm so sorry for that. I thought it was a line. I thought it was like these were these were le legitimately damaged, and so they were just trying to get rid of them. It would be fun to be the guy that gets to damage them, though. That would be a fun job. You gotta run around in the city, and you gotta scuff them on stuff. I doubt that's how they do it, but you're right. If that were the case, it would be If that were fun. the way they do it, if they give it to a dummy like me, and I gotta run around my goofy pals tearing up t-shirts, Shirts. That'd be a fun shot. Hey, can you barf on these again? <laughs> <laughs> Two more towers. Uh, I like the idea of a whole barfed on line. <laughs> Shirts, pants. Kanye himself barfed on. <laughs> wow. I guarantee oh. they'd sell for 50 grand. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> what is wrong with the world? I don't know. This is, uh, yeah, poverty chic. No, I mean, no I don't think, I just I just don't care because I don't care about designer clothing at all. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. Once things get past a certain price tag, it's just not oh, for me. Not enough snipers. Jake, you're the biggest shoe guy in, in here. Do you like your shoes to look new or do you have uh, some? It depends on what shoes they are. I was going to okay. ask the same question. I don't yeah. think you have a pair of shoes that are dirty. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't if wear them. If they get dirty, you buy a new pair. I don't. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Ace. <laughs> that could possibly be the answer to that question. Yes, I don't wear any of my shoes long enough for them to get dirty. Okay, which is a problem. I know that, and I have a. I don't really do much. And I don't really, and I don't really do much. You don't I'm go a lazy outside. Sloth. I'm a fat, lazy slob. As a matter of fact, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Where's my hole? Yes, hunger, better start cooking. Who's hungry? I'm hungry. Yeah. Glad we read Son that story. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. What did I do? What did I do? Well, we what need a story that'll, cheer, uh, that'll uh, cheer Tom up a little bit. Oh, what's right that? What? No, you tell us. What's in the news that you liked? Um, you like this. Anything? Uh, any butt stuff? I like this one. <laughs> I, I like this story. Your son gotta... just said any butt stuff. <laughs> no, this is, uh, Dad. I like this one. This is a really sweet neighborhood called uh, Orange Woods Estates in yes. Florida. No lakes, just a small pond. These people are having their breakfast. And what happens, Kristen? Uh, well, I wasn't going there, so hold on well, a second. Well, this is my fault. I asked Tom what he yes, might like. I You've thought got he would this. go you're, with the Johnny Cash story, but apparently I was wrong. Just we do what you're time. told. Now we don't have time. <laughs> still get us in trouble. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Okay. Um, it's, okay. It involves a large alligator in their backyard. Yes, it does. <laughs> Can you give us a hint? Uh, what's coming up on uh, Hooker the Cooker today? Uh, it's another viral recipe from TikTok. Oh, okay. Oh, first, I thought. <laughs> I thought it was a <laughs> Yes, we're all going to get COVID. So, well, we call them plague pancakes. Uh, you know, stop crying uh, and eat it. Will you? Uh, and uh, it's plague chic. Um, These are so delicious, oh, my God. eyes are bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like some more Ebola fries, please. <laughs> uh, uh, coming up, uh, we have a giant hunk 
O Animal stories. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, and um, let's see. Oh, I, I want to remind you that it would be nice to get home today and have a nice package on your doorstep. Oh. A package of something you actually want. Yeah. And yet, and yet still getting kind of a surprise because it's the box of awesome Tell Me More Christie. Yeah, from Bespoke Post. They get together with small businesses and brands you haven't really heard of yet to bring you the most unique goods every month. No matter what you're into this summer season, from camping gear to beach day to travel must-have, Box of Box of Awesome has everything you need. In fact, Josh, you have a list of boxes. What's what's available this month? Let me tell you a little bit about the aged, the aging kit for uh, you know your favorite drinks and stuff. Oh yeah, is from Black Swan Cooperage, a father daughter duo located in the heart of the Minnesota Northwoods. These folks know what they're doing, and these glasses are hand blown from Italian crystal glass. Oh, cool! Holy heck! How, how do you how do you get set up for this? Well, you go to boxofawesome.com. And take their quiz, and those answers will tell the folks what uh, what you might enjoy. And your box just shows up. They release new boxes every month across many different categories, and each box valued at around seventy dollars. But you only pay a fraction of that price. And each box of awesome, you are supporting small businesses like the Cooperage. Josh was speaking of. Get twenty percent off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com because you know us. And enter the code Bob and Tom at checkout to show us some love. That's box of Awesome.com. Code Bob and Tom for 20% off your first box. Thank you very much. Um, coming up, we've got, to, speaking of shoes, yeah. a giraffe. Yeah. Their necks is too long. <laughs> <laughs> had, to be, had to be fitted with a special appliance. Uh -huh. uh, we got lions, rattlesnakes, turtles, wolves, and gators. There's a gator in the backyard, mummy. It's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> Have you seen the dog? <laughs> That's next. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, man, this is Donnie Baker, and this is Bob and Tom 24-7. I swear to God it is. That's like all day and most of the night. Hey, you got the Bob and Tom Show app on your phone? You know someone who might like the Bob and Tom Show app? You should tell them it's free and available in the iTunes and Google Play Store. Once they download the app, they can tune into their local station. Listen to us here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Heck, you can even set an alarm that'll wake you up with the Bob and Tom Show. Each and every morning, right off the bat, boom, there's Chick McGee giving you your sports update. What a way to start the day, huh? The Bob and Tom Show app, again, free and available in the iTunes and Google Play Store. Rolling through a Tuesday, Jess Hooker, stay tuned. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, hopefully on the Bob and Tom Show app. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The White House is taking steps to ease a nationwide shortage of baby formula. Among the measures announced by the Biden administration include reopening the largest domestic manufacturer of baby formula and increasing the level of imported formula. The Abbott Nutrition Plant has been closed since February because of contamination issues. Before it can resume producing formula, however, Abbott must overhaul its safety protocols and procedures. McDonald's is pulling its golden arches in Russia. The U.S.-based burger behemoth is selling its 850 restaurants in Russia over the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine. Mickey D says it is looking for a buyer who will keep its 62,000 workers in Russia employed and keep paying them until the deal's closed. McDonald's said it's the first time the company has ever de-arched or exited a major market. And two more defendants have pleaded guilty for their role in a multi-million dollar scheme to manipulate the Amazon marketplace e-commerce platform. All told, six people have been charged in the conspiracy, which federal prosecutors say involved paying bribes to get Amazon employees and contractors to leak confidential data. That data? Well, it would be used to grant certain sellers a competitive advantage on Amazon Marketplace. The two men who pleaded guilty yesterday faced sentencing in September. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. We got some extra from the Bob and Tom Show. Comedian Greg Warren, former uh, state champion wrestler. You're the son of a wrestling coach. Now, I assume your dad was also your wrestling coach. Is yes. that correct? Yes, he was. He was a high school wrestling coach, so I wrestled, and my mom was into music, so I played the clarinet in the band, uh -huh. which uh, they made fun of me, especially the guys on the wrestling team, especially sure. my best friend, Huey Baker. He was, uh, he was a black guy. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that would just get a hold of something and never shut up. <laughs> and like, Look at Greg, man. Greg played a flute. <laughs> it's, a, it's a clarinet. You, it's a flute, Greg. You a flute man. <laughs> Look at little flute man, Greg. Flute your flute, Greg. Little flute man, Greg. 
You'll be on the bus going to a match. It'll be real quiet, and all of a sudden you hear, Hop, two, three, four, what the hell are we fighting for? Flute man. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing when you're out there wrestling and you hear, Hit him with your flute, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Essential Morning Radio, all day and all night. This is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7. Uh, Rick Schrader is our guest. Rick is a uh, is a newly married new dad. Yes, I have a four-year-old daughter now, which is, she's a doll. Her name's Maya, and she's beautiful, but, I'll, you know, I'll tell you, she's fallen under the sway of the evil purple one. That, uh, uh, you uh-oh. mean? Uh, yes, Barney. That's Barney the dinosaur? Every morning. I love you. Uh, you know, I... He might, you know, I haven't digested a breakfast in a year for listening to uh, <laughs> Barney on the uh, and those amazing robot Stepford like children they have surrounding him and the realistic portrayals of kids. Now, hey Barney, let's clean our room and then pray. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> where do they get these kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> off the Mouseketeers directly to Barney, and uh, it's amazing. If you know, you have a, the kids love Barney; mm-hmm. they oh, love yeah. him. Oh, which, yeah. You know, which, you know that's going to be the next Waco type disaster. <laughs> uh, Barney and his followers in a Quonset hut outside Dallas. You know, <laughs> sharing means caring, Billy. So strike the match. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next thing you know, uh, polyurethane Barney suit goes up like Tinder. (laughs) I point this out because I care. (laughs) Hey, folks. (laughs) Boom. It's me. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's 24 days and 7 hours. No, 27 days a week and 24 like the show with with the guy who whispers all the time and saves the world. Bob and Tom 24-7. It won't blow up the world. Lord Coretta's a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run, you look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah no. You know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but Mm-mm. the doctor actually stuck a camera in my rectum. <laughs> oh. It wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Right? <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Coming from me. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hello. Jess Hooker will be along with a tasty treat. Good. I'm hungry. <laughs> There's a Scrosby at the track phone hotline hot phone. There's Willie Griswold. There's some food. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. You're welcome. Uh, 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 Christy, why don't we uh, dig, yes, into, dig into that Johnny Cash story? This is a... This is kind of an odd one, and I know that Pat has prepared something apparently for this. A mural of Johnny Cash painted on the side of a water tower has been leaking from a bullet hole in the groin area. Really? According to the Kansas City Star, the water tower is in Kingsland, Johnny Cash's birthplace. It features a painted silhouette of the famous man in black. Someone apparently taken careful aim when shooting at the tower as the mural has been continuously leaking from the crotch. I shot a Johnny Cash water tower once just to, just to watch it dry. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. Nice. Well, that was going. Right? Yeah. Betty Graham, the water office manager, has asked anyone with information about the incident to contact the water department or the sheriff's office. <sighs> it, That's it, pretty funny. So it looks like he's peeing on people, huh? <laughs> this is why we can't have anything nice. <laughs> it's true. Now, People that. shooting at the Johnny Cash water tower. Uh, now the Chuck Berry water tower. Oh. Well, I guess he'd want to be underneath. Yeah, he, the mural was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'm, uh, I got that wrong. Uh, 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 Pat, you've got a tribute to Mr. Cash? Hello, I'm Patty Cash. Johnny is a mural on a water tower. Shot right in the weenie, looks like he's watering the flowers. <laughs> Put the shooter in prison <laughs> and throw away the key. 
But that mural keeps it going. Looks like it's taking a pee. <laughs> <laughs> I try and be a good man. It's like I told my son. Don't break lamps at Tom's house. Don't ever play with guns. <laughs> they shot a water tower in Arkansas. Right through Johnny's crotch. Now it leaks all day and night. And people stop to walk. <laughs> <laughs> A pretty funny idea yeah. that they've got. I, I did read that they've just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars rehabbing the water tower. Oh, now they're oh gonna have, God. Now they're going to have to climb up there and patch it, I guess. Yeah. Um, he knows put a, a cork in it. Yeah. yeah well, good thing that uh, black won't show the urine stains. Yeah. I assume <laughs> it'll start to rust. Probably. Would that look hmm. rather... Oh, so Rest. anyways, hope they don't do this to the R. Kelly water tower. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They chose yeah. to keep up, which is <laughs> young, yeah. debatable. Uh, bold young. move. <laughs> <laughs> Problematic. <laughs> Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Donnie. Oh, hey, Donnie. I need some of that Johnny Cash water. Yeah. Um, I'm trying right now to beautify my yard. All oh, right. Yeah. You know? And he, he ain't really my thing, but my mom feels his boyfriend. Right. His brother's cousin is a realtor, just like you, Christy. Yeah. And he, he told me I need to improve my house's um, curb appeal right. in case I want to sell it someday. Okay. Um, but to me, curb appeal is a street walker who's wearing a jean skirt and already has her hair in a messy bun. <laughs> Swear to God, <laughs> nothing beats a good head start. Anyways, <laughs> this realtor dude told me that adding plants like help the curb appeal. So I spent a few hours talking to a plant lady about where to start. Okay. She said my soil was crappy, and I should add things to it like um, manure. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to add more crap if it's already crappy? A good question. To me, that's like putting a... The cart before the whore. Anyway, <laughs> I need to talk to somebody else, like with a green thumb. So I asked my drummer, Dusty Privet's cousin, Wallace. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, he knows about plants. Uh, what kind of plants make my yard better? It's like young couples got money. All the plants he mentioned have names that sound like sex positions. Cannabis rooterinus and... I wrote the other one down. Savita Philatus. <laughs> anyway, that's what some young dudes are into, I guess. But mm -hmm. I ain't no stoner or a grower, except in the bedroom. As for the ladies, see the real miracle grow. <laughs> I swear to God they did. Miracle, all right. So I go back to the plant lady. First thing she says is to get something called a burning bush. So once again, we're right back to horrors. So I go to that one nursery. It used to be a Western Sizzling, and asked the lady pruning if she knew where I could find a, a burning bush. Right. She said she could have it one time, but I was 25 years too late. <laughs> I probably shouldn't want a tank top. It always gets chicks horny and makes them start kegling. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> makes them horny, Tom. And Don, Donnie in a tank top makes them yeah. horny. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, once again, uh, we have Christy Lee at the news Oh, we have desk. food. That's what we and, need to talk um, about. Okay. We got food being delivered. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll talk about it when she's back in here. Oh, sorry. What have you got over there? Small airplane has drawn the world's make beer, not war with its flight path in the skies above Poland. According to the Independent, the two-seater aircraft took off from the city of Poznan to create the 40-mile wide phrase over the course of four hours. The flight path also included a heart at the end of the phrase. The phrase in English was visible to thousands of users on the FlightTrader24.com website. Hmm. The flight uh, comes at a one time of a heightened tension, of course, across Europe. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, so now, make beer, not war. What? It, so, in other words, this is not sky writing. No. If you're on the ground, you see the plane, you don't see it. But if you're looking at this one of these websites, this is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is uh, cool. You, uh, we, this one, uh, flightradar24.com. Mm -hmm. I guess you can follow anyone who's participating in this. So you can look at, I guess, thousands of flight paths. So, um, once again, it's kind of a peace message yeah in these difficult times yeah, um, prefer my planes to be bombing enemy tanks as opposed to just <laughs> writing some message in the air <laughs> okay yeah. well am i wrong what a waste of fuel <laughs> yeah. no i think it's trying to send a message i obviously yeah, if, you're that'll trying, do if, it. if you're trying to get to the russians <laughs> perhaps you might want to go with vodka rather than beer okay well, my, my question is can the can you log on to this website if you're in russia 
Yeah, see, this is a uh, totally probably not. It's blocked <laughs> because you've got to go around, you know, various protocols to. Actually <laughs> well, yeah, judging by what it says, no one. I wouldn't think uh, okay. anyone in Russia could get to it. Probably. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, most Americans don't even know about this website. <laughs> Who the hell's watching flight patterns? I am. If my kids are on a flight, I'll well, watch it. Yeah, that's a f flight right. tracker. Yeah. yeah. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> the plane's gonna get there. This is coming from a man. This is coming from Josh, a man who watches his pizza in the microwave rotating. <laughs> You're you think I cook pizza in the Thank microwave? You, <laughs> yeah. He does not. <laughs> And pizza pizzazz. Thank you very much. Yes, he does. <laughs> and you can watch it because it's right there. It just yeah. circles around. It's Ring. incredible. You've seen this, right? I won't have you making rotation. fun of one of my favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there's food here. Oh, hey, my speaking, goodness. Speaking of food, Tom. Oh, okay. Now we're have ready. Your, uh, do there's we have food. your... Uh, um, yeah, oh, he, he has it. Oh, here yeah, it everybody is. Everybody has one. Um, yeah. So this is a this is a big viral thing right now on okay. TikTok. I don't know what this and is. It is um, their pasta chips. Pasta oh. chips. Pasta chips. So oh. these are giant rigatones. They are. Uh, you boil them al dente. Well, Jake's already diving in. <laughs> Thanks for, First thanks, of all, thanks for letting me get through the me, setup. Doesn't the? Wow. I just want to say this for Chick's benefit. Does it? That's really. <laughs> that's, your, that's your boy. That's really good. Doesn't rigatone sound like uh, <laughs> a band started by one of the great former Washington Redskins, um, the Rigatones? Yeah, well, okay, Rigatoni. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, John Rigatoni. Regans and the Rigatones. <laughs> it sounds like a little Stevie Van Zandt solo project that's a tribute to James Gandolfini. The Rigatone. Yeah, but I mean, um, usually the... Uh, Italian Americans, they drop the vowels at the sure. end, so they usually. Just so I'm sorry. Snap. So you took these, you you deep fried them? So I no, I didn't. I I, <laughs> I boiled them till uh, they were al dente, and then I put them in an air fryer. And I followed a recipe I found online, and that one said. Fry them for 15 minutes at 400 degrees, and, and that, looks that like a was piece of wrong. That looks like a piece of charcoal. Now. Yeah, so after a couple of batches and tests, I learned that you do it for 350 okay. you, at you, seven you, minutes and then flip it seven more do minutes. Do you spritz them with um, I did. Olive I did oil? olive oil and some Italian seasoning and uh and what, do you have some powder. dips here? Yeah, and then I made uh, a feta dip. Um, with just some Greek yogurt. And then the other one is actually my... Better dip, dip, my, dip, better dip, better dip. It's actually my marinara sauce, but uh, with some sweet Italian sauce. Well, let's give this a shot. Okay, Josh, give it a shot, and we'll, right. we'll watch you. Which one, which, what are you dipping it into over there? The marinara. Okay. And your thoughts? Boy. Mm -hmm. It does crunch. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good, good, but it's crunchy. Delicious. That's the thing. I, I think they're tasty, but they are good not mouthfeel. delightful to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not enjoyable. It's a oh. mess. It's almost yeah. like eating them raw. Right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. This feta dip is so good, Yeah, but I, I want a gyro now. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right. The, the pasta chips are like putting pebbles in your lasagna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I saw people use bow tie. They used lots of different ones. But these these two were the fan favorites. It's like chewing on a brick. Yes. Yeah, no, it's more pleasant. A tasty than that. brick. <laughs> a tasty brick. Yeah. That's so, really good. Yeah. Huh. I like the darker chip. What was, is that? A different? Uh, no, that was one that was just in the early test, so it's a little bit more burnt than the other. I ones. like that one better. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Here, do you want the dark chips? I, yeah. Like dark meat? You want the dark chips? I want that dark <laughs> meat. Give me that dark meat. I'm hungry. Mm. As you can see, eating these things precludes one from speaking. Yeah, sorry, so I didn't. A radio yeah, stunt. I didn't. I didn't think this through. You can break. It doesn't sound very good. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, really, I'm, I'm really, really sorry to, to everybody that doesn't like to hear people eat. Yeah, it's something. Um, they're way too chewy. Yeah, they're yeah. too crunchy. It's, yeah, it's. Um, I love them. Perfect. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, I, good. I think the chef and I agree that I I would not do them again. No, I won't. Every Italian restaurant should have this on the table, like chips and queso at Mexican restaurants. Oh, that's okay. an idea. I love this. Okay, cool. Mm. Oh, so will your dentist. Well, <laughs> another... Uh, when you chip a dude. Another fried rigatone victim. Is anybody online? <laughs> are they experimenting? Are they putting any cheese inside the pasta chips? No, I think that would be fun. They're but putting I'll, Parmesan on top. On of them, top, usually read, when yeah. it's still hot, yeah. you can put Parmesan oh, on top. Yeah, but, um, yeah. They got all those smart guys over there on TikTok. Yeah. Right, well, uh, well, Christy Lee is at the news desk. What else have you got? Wait a minute. Didn't you used to eat kale chips and just love them, right? Aren't there? Didn't you fry up something? Yeah, or kale bake, chips are good. You bake something. Them? Baked them in the no, oven. I, I agree with. Ms. What did Hooker. you bake in the oven that they were? Remember? Oh, oh, those white carrots. What are those called? 
white parsnips. carrots. Parsnips. Parsnips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parsnips. Yeah, they look like big white carrots. Yeah. You, you slice them real thin, and they they smell like um, turpentine. But when you cook them, they're really good. Really. Appetizing. They smell like <laughs> turpentine. They are good. I love them. Really? And but you, you put them in the them. oven and they come out and you yeah, you, you eat them like chips, huh? Yeah. You could probably do those yeah, in your air are, fryer, uh, in your wind cooker. These yeah. are really, really hard in your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Jess. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm not being critical. Good. You're the one that no, Jess, with, you, yeah. you admit, I I wouldn't eat them again. No. <laughs> I'm about to eat a half a dozen when we go. <laughs> You can have mine. Don't touch your plate. Oh. <laughs> you filthy human being. Hey, scientists have managed to grow plants in lunar dirt. I don't know if you heard about this. Robert Furl of the University of Florida planted... Oh, Furl, is at it again, huh? Yeah, he is. He, pa- he planted thale cress in moon soil. What? Thale, at T-H-A-L-E, cress. What is that? It's like a lettuce a grass. kind of thing, like a grass. Okay. In moon soil, returned by Apollo 11's Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Isn't anyone going to stop these... These idiots. This is how another race of people That's right. spring up out of. Go ahead, out feed of, the Martians. Uh, lunar dirt. <laughs> Researchers had no idea if anything would sprout in you the harsh think, moon dirt. You don't think the people from Uranus have heard this? And the, the rain, Uranians are coming down here right now. Space plants. Audrey twos. Yes. <laughs> I mean, can't you grow stuff if you in glass marbles if you put enough nutrients in it? What lunar dirt is just what rocks. All the seeds sprouted. The downside was after the first week, the lunar soil stressed. The small flowering weeds so much, they grew more slowly than seedlings planted in yeah. dirt from Earth. They should t- put the lunar dirt in my yard. They'll have dandelions like crazy <laughs> after about two days. Most of the moon plants ended up stunted. You know it's, uh, you know it's dandelions, not dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> Roar. Just a, just Honey, you can look at the dandelions. <laughs> Dan D. Lion sounds like a drag name doing Lion King. Uh, Bruce, get me a gazelle. <laughs> Give it up did, for Dandy Lion. Did you see his? Did you see his mane? Seriously? <laughs> Hello, 1990s. <laughs> you call that a roar? Okay. Dandy Lions. Dandy Lions. I uh, what a dumb experiment. <laughs> Or, did you just chip a tooth? Josh, what happened? Josh is still in, in the feed bag. You know, the food segment's over, Josh. My bad. <laughs> you, you, seriously, if you, you like these things, I, you, I've got two almost full ones over here. Did you try the feta dip? That's the good stuff. No, the dip is great. The marinara the is great. The these I chips, know, I these chips it's like eating a ball peen hammer. Hey, the next time Pistaki calls in, can we call him a feta dip? I think that'd be fun to call yeah. Pistaki a feta dip. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, I do think, I think Rigatone, wouldn't that be a great name for Rigo, Rigo's band? Yes, yes, yes. John Riggins and the Rigatones. Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> What's the matter? You got bowel issues? <laughs> like you're giving me the look like we better take a break. These Rigatones are going right to my intestines. I don't know what's going on. Is there, by the way, Will, is there a, um, a marijuana product uh, in the legal marijuana realm called like lunar weed? Do they, um, do they go with sort of space? There is a type of hash oil, I believe, called Moon Rocks. And it is a, a hashish of sorts that is powdery, but it's kind of rocky. Hmm. Now, are you proud that your son knows that much about the world of marijuana? <laughs> hey, well, it's whatever. You know, you got to have a hobby. <laughs> one of these days, I'll get one. <laughs> what if the, what I've if been you thinking said... of becoming a late-age stoner. <laughs> oh, that guy. Nice. I, I, that would be, uh, I endorse that. Let's you, do that'd it. be a rough should. week. Just get anything to mellow you out. It would be that great. would be anything for you to go... Oh, yes. Just for 10 minutes. What if all of you guys got high one morning? <laughs> now, there's a lot of, there are a lot of podcasts out there and they're all pretty pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, but nobody's done it like this <laughs> and in a state where it's not legal. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to we'd have to go out into Lake there's Michigan that. and go out whatever it is 50 miles. Um okay, well, uh now we have a, anyway. a, a teaser, Christy, we've got uh, what was oh, it? We again? have time, don't we, for some Okay, lawyers. yeah, we well, got one of your animal stories. Well, yeah, cuz we were talking about lions, villagers in Kenya relieved to find reports of a lion on the loose. Turned out to be a shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw it. It was over there, and it was yellow. A farmhand. And I thought, in it's a lion. It's, its name is Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> a farmhand in Kenyatta Village raised the alarm after spotting what he thought was a lion. That's right. I peering saw out from beneath a hedge outside his employer's home. Peeking at me. I'm not talking into that snake. <laughs> Sir, that's my microphone. <laughs> 
local chief <laughs> Cyrus Mbijwa. <laughs> the man mistakes things for animals. <laughs> <laughs> Your sons of bitches. Excuse me, we have Chrissy back up. I've, I've lost my place now. So we're in we're in Kenya. And the local chief there, Cyrus. <laughs> Mbijwa told BBC we treated the incident with a lot of caution and seriousness. Because they got wild lions there. Sure. We first ensured everyone was safe. Then wildlife officials investigated and discovered that it was a shopping bag. The bag had been placed in the hedge by the homeowner who'd put some avocado tree seedlings in it and wanted them to stop drying out. What? Mm. Yeah, I went, I just, I'm just reading what's put in front of me. <laughs> no. Does anyone else realize that they had to ask the local chieftain? Mm-hmm. Well, it's in Kenya, for God's sake. Well, I, mean, I ain't living there, then. Oh, it's beautiful there. <laughs> there's <laughs> chieftain and there's elephants it's, and giraffes. It was an next or too long. Why? And, I mean, it's great. I, I just think it's... As they're approaching this thing, thinking it's a lion, yeah. who's the guy that had to get close enough to determine that it was a shopping bag? Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> no, the, no, the chief. The chief's taking one of his um, tribe members. Uh, Steve, yeah, uh, can you go check this out? I'm going to s- stay back here to talk to the press. It is, I, <laughs> it is an honor to serve there, you. There, thank you. To talk to the press, and what did this man think the pressman's microphone was? Uh, a snake. A snake. <laughs> it was a funny thing. Uh, yeah. I got another guy. But, you know, the, the white, the great white hunter must have felt like kind of a douche when he did a, hit the hit the paper bag with a tranquilizer gun. I got it, sir. I got it. Oh, my God, it's still move, moving around. If she, is Chieftain an elected position? Uh, I think maybe. Naboob for Chieftain. I don't know. Boy, I'm bombing hard. Have another chip. Happy <laughs> humphrey. Chips have gone to your head. Um, right now, I want to talk to you about, uh, let's just say, you've, dis- you've discovered there's not a lion in your backyard or an alligator. What is it? Uh, it's uh, it's time for you to go leave your backyard and go out to the... I'm so sorry. Who's doing that? Is hey, that my fault? All you know mics off. All mics off, anymore. but me and Christy. Uh, you want to go to you want to go to the uh, the pharmacy, and you find out that everything costs a huge amount of money. This is where GoodRx comes in. It's the free app, and you can get up to eighty percent off your prescriptions. We get love letters about GoodRx. Tell me more, Christy. Because it's a really great thing, and I have been a big GoodRx user since the coupon days. Now I just go to the app where they instantly compare prescription prices at my pharmacy right there in my neighborhood. They'll do it for you too. GoodRx is free and easy to use and works whether you do or do not have insurance. And even if you have insurance, guess what? GoodRx might actually be your copay price. Want to save up to 80%? I know you do. You'll be able to find prescription savings at over 70,000 pharmacies nationwide with GoodRx. Places like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aids, Vons, Walmart, and more. Simple, smart savings on your prescriptions. Just a click away. Check out GoodRx. Go to GoodRx.com slash Tom. That's GoodRx.com slash Tom. GoodRx is not insurance. It will be used in place of insurance. In 2021, GoodRx users saved an average. <laughs> An average of eighty-one percent on retail prescription prices. Josh, you've been you've been very very poor this uh, <laughs> what? Gordon. Thank you very much, Gordon. The sad part is I can see you trying. Well, that- <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Oh, damn it. Okay. You know, when they ca- when they found the shopping bag, I forgot to tell you. Do you know what yeah. was in it? What was in it? A Barack Obama's birth certificate. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the joke you're gonna end wow. with. Wow. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at Bob and Tom, or you can email us at Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. I got this new venture. It's called Say It to My Face. Oh. Pretty God. <laughs> cool. Huh. Hey, Josh, let's say someone talks smack about you on Facebook yeah. or Twitter. Sure. And the first thing you do is you call me, then I go to their house. And when they answer the door, I just yell, Say It to My Face. <laughs> and then I jack them with a blood dart right to the larynx. <laughs> <laughs> and Christy, you and your ladies yes. don't got to worry either because I got you covered too. See, my friend Tasha and I are launching an all-female company called Oh No You Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to spell it on the radio, but in print, it's badass. It's all hymenated. Hymenated? Yep. So the next time some chick, you know, calls another chick an obese whale when you post your porta potty selfie on Instagrams, just give me and Tasha a call. She'll go to that chick's house and slap the spit out of her while screaming, Oh, no, you didn't! <laughs> Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the Over the Road Trucker. This is Bob and Tom's program 24 7. Uh, good morning. I say Bob. You say Tom. Let's do this. Bob. Bob. Hopefully, you were playing along at home. If not, that was fun, wasn't it? Hey, don't forget about Bob and Tom's all day replay beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern to 1 a.m. Eastern. That's right. It's Bob and Tom's all day replay hosted by Christopher at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll replay today's show back to back and again back to back right here on Bob and Tom 24 7. We do that so you never miss a thing. You can always catch up, always hear the show, and you can always keep it tuned right here to Bob and Tom 24 7. We are always here for you. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update from the National Football League officials. We'll meet this week with Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson as the league continues to investigate whether he violated its personal conduct policy. A person familiar with the plan spoke with the Associated Press yesterday. He's facing 22 civil lawsuits from massage therapists accusing him of sexual misconduct. Major League Baseball in the American League, your winners, Tigers beat Tampa Bay, Yankees, Boston, Toronto, Texas, White Sox, and Minnesota all win. The National League, Miami, the Cubs, Milwaukee, San Francisco, and the Dodgers get wins, and St. Louis at the Mets, that one postponed. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals starts tonight in Miami, the Heat hosting the Celtics. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. They have, they have a buffet with, what, pizza and chicken fried wings? chicken. Josh, do, do the announcement. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's say I, like, I come out from a tub of ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Arnold, dude. Yeah. I've got some lasso and there's a pizza, just like an animated pizza running down the range. <laughs> Get back here! Woo! <laughs> when you need to rustle up some grub... Head on over to Pizza Ranch. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom, all the time, in your ear. Well, let's get a serious tip from you. What When you get pulled over for a traffic thing, what's your suggestion? What do you do? Just be polite. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I can if you that. if you say yes or no, sir, da 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 da, mm -hmm. more than likely you're going to get off unless you just run into a jerk. And mm -hmm. you're not supposed to get out of the car, right? No, you know the best thing to do, mm -hmm. and what I always do at night, uh, if they pull me over, I always flip on my dome light and put my hands on the. Th and they always say, "Oh, you've been arrested before." <laughs> <laughs> And I go, no, I'm an ex cop, and then all of a sudden everything just moves. Now, how do they? How do you prove you're an ex cop? Do you have some kind of special signal? Or I just say I, got, I you, make more money now. Mm -hmm. and they know that you're. They know I'm the nice. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I am so doing that, telling them I'm an ex cop. You yeah. don't ever say you know a cop either. Oh, oh really? Because then the, the automatic response is, yeah, I know him. I hate him. Oh, <laughs> well, they, they must know the same cop we know. <laughs> wow. That that's is all, sad. That's the automatic response. Oh, really? That's the worst thing you can say. But, uh, you know, I got a friend that's a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a free pass. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't pull me over. <laughs> I'm assuming I can go on with my life. Hey, I give it the police fund. Does that help if I have the bumper sticker in the car? No. 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 <laughs> that's the first thing they look for. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Every they drug dealer they just in the go, world has one of those. <laughs> Boy, you're a chump. <laughs> you just paid for our last keg party. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Oh, we're speaking with comedian Jim Gaffigan. What else is uh, 
your love? What's, what are you into? Do you have hobbies? I, I, do you, are you, my, do you my, have, like weird food? Are you a drug addict? Anything I, cool uh, to talk about? Oh, I, I love food. Food okay. is my. Are you a drug, a drug addict? addict. <laughs> I'm very pale, but not a drug addict. <laughs> I'd like I, to be a drug addict. I for a little love while. food. Mm -hmm. I even enjoy watching people make food. But you, you ever notice the Food Network is far more interesting when you're hungry? You know, when you're full, you're kind of like, this is stupid. But when you're hungry, the food networks are like porn. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Whip yeah. it up, baby. Make it for me. I love eating late at night, too. You know, you're not supposed to eat late at night. And mm -hmm. Then again, you're not supposed to drink booze in the morning. <laughs> I'm at Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Hey, I heard you guys talking about that man with 13 inches of pork. Yeah, yeah. 13 and a half. It's crazy. You guys know Jamie Vickers? You know drummer for Velvet Donger? No. no. <laughs> he was uncut, too, and he could hide just about anything. Really? Did that affect the taste, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online, all the time. Bob. Don't listen to him, it's carpet. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. Oh, look at that, Tom. Pat has his guitar in hand. Uh -oh. oh, Pat and I were talking in the hallway. He's got a, uh, a tribute to food. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. My issues with it, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jess Hooker is here. She uh, cooked us up some uh, pasta from a TikTok viral video. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wearing a sweater. It's beautiful Zapruder pink. Thank you. That's really pink. That's like a neon pink. Not... What is this, a pruder? No. There's Ace Cosby manning the track phone hotline. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Uh, I apologize. I Two letters and multiple tweets. Moon rocks is not. It, it's weed that's ro dipped in hash oil, then rolled in keef. I got oh, it. Oh, wow. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. How does keef feel about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, He's uh, a fine guitar player. Uh, Josh Arnold is here, too. Uh, okay. yeah. A lot of you might have thought that he left after the last break in his attempt at comedy, but, but yeah. he's here. Yeah. 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 One eight hundred. One eight hundred. Don't kill yourself because of a bad joke. Mistaking. You're, okay. uh, You're gonna be alright. Oh, I didn't think they were bad. Uh, you guys just gave me nothing for a snake. Is okay. I believe you're musing. That's right. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I, either, man. So this. Uh, so what you're trying to do is you're about to do an episode of what were you thinking? No, he's not no, because no. you suggested. No, I'm not. I'm not now. Well, he is doing one. I'm just sure as hell not uh, now. Failed to do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you said failed. Joke, joke. And here's Tom. And also earlier we're talking about Franco American Spaghettio. And uh, that, Spaghettio. That's uh, <laughs> that's food, is it not? Yes. Well, I've got a Spaghettios letter here. Can you? play that again this is the actual commercial from 65 how i i'll play it sounds as, long, than as that. long as you let me play it it'll well, play it right so so american so. spaghetti -o. the neat new spaghetti you can eat with a spoon the greatest invention since the napkin the napkin. <laughs> I wonder how she got that job, huh? Oh, did, you, did they go, uh, uh, What now? Did they go, uh, oh, right there? Yeah, they go into the jingle. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. I mean, it's meant... American spaghetti -o. The neat new spaghetti you can eat with a spoon. Oh, I got that. The greatest invention since the napkin. Uh, feminine, of course. Uh-oh, uh -oh, spaghetti -o. She's great. No. Seven more minutes. <laughs> hey, hey, wait, 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 Josh, you're going to critique... Could you turn that... What, are you going to critique... This now? I don't care for the singing. I think it should be more of more of a robust. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, spaghetti. -os. That's like the. Uh oh, spaghetti. -os. Wow. Do you let your kids eat their spaghetti with their hands? <laughs> Yep. My great on niece, is, yeah. my great niece was on my Facetime last night, and she was just they yep. love well, eating spaghetti depends. with their hands. It, see, we, are you, they children? You, they're children. They're little. <laughs> yeah, they're like see, five. I, in my situation, <laughs> with, they're five with, and three. With six-year-old heart, you have to have the sauce on one side of the yes, plate. Yes, that's the way Charlie and the was doing it. Spaghetti on the other. Yep. Oh, and okay. Then depending on her mood, she'll either not touch the sauce at all. Yes. Or possibly well, how about you go, hey, go to bed and you're not eating yeah. a thing? You ever try that? <laughs> Yell at your children more. <laughs> Otherwise you get that. <laughs> yeah. You want another you want another that running around your house? Well, no. you just you just mad at me because I can't talk good. Is that what this is, Josh? <laughs> you talk finally. <laughs> Dear Bob and Tom Show. Uh -oh. I am an over really. the road trucker. I wedge a can of SpaghettiOs between the engine block. Oh, boy, man. And about 
about uh, three between I- my ass <laughs> crack and uh, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not. Hey, I, I can plead faster than nothing. You know? I mean, I- <laughs> well, uh, sorry. You know, I've been on the road a long time. Yeah, and, you get lonely. Uh, you know, I I know, I, now, I know what I like. Now I can't read the letter or the man's CV it's, handle. Uh, it beats humping roadkill again. You know, I'll tell you I, don't that. Want, I don't want poor fish Boy, man to be. Boy, that gets to be a mess. By the way, <laughs> hey, fish man, heard him talking about you. Wedge in a can of spaghettios in your can. No, he puts it in the engine block. Oh, three okay. hours later. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes uh, that makes no sense. kidding. And he oh, heats it, it up, up that way. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I'd be so nervous that it would rattle and, and get into something. Yeah, and, no like, joke. Well, 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 this is nothing beats a soot-covered can of pasta and a lot lizard with questionable <laughs> intentions. Thank you very much. Oh, geez, questionable. questionable. I'm not sure what's going on Those there. Those questions have been answered. Thank you, Fishman. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you a, Fishman. He's a frustrated novelist yeah. there. I like, good. I, like I like him. I like him. Speaking too. of uh, food. Pat, I'm not exactly sure where you're going with this. Do you want to give me an explanation? <laughs> what was that? Uh, I'm Josh my, burping. I'm having my issues uh, with weight because of all, you know, eating in the back and the... The, the bag and the eating. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm very confused. The you're, you're eating in the back. Well, <laughs> yikes. Uh, let, me, let me explain how E. coli works. Okay, all right. No, to be, to be fair, okay, we tried it your way. Now let's try it my way. Now, Pat's going to do a song about food. <laughs> Pat? I went to Nutrisystems. <laughs> I was thinking about losing weight. I stepped on a scale, and I got a measuring tape. They said, wait a minute, mister. There's only so much we can do. Uh, I think liposuction may be the only thing for you. Suck the fat off my fanny. <laughs> Suck the cellulite. Suck the fat off my fanny. Hey. 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 Suck the weight right off me. Woo. Oh, yeah, you done. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I got on Jenny Craig. And then I tried the paleo diet. I bought the Weight Watchers app. Because Josh said I should try it. Me. Damn, I miss my Panera. Sometimes bread is what you need. I think a plastic surgeon is the only thing for me. Let me hear you. Come on. Suck the fat off my fanny. Suck the cellulite. Suck the fat off my fanny. Hey. 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 Suck the way right off me. Oh. A tribute to Robbie Robertson good. and the band. That was the lap band. Rick Danko. <laughs> That's another... Uh, okay. An applause for me. <laughs> hey. I'm back, baby! <laughs> Uh, the lap band, of course. Uh, that's right. Uh, have a very serious weight that's loss another, project. Uh, yeah. That's another song Robbie uh, stole off Lee Von Helm. Uh, Tom, back to you. Undone. Uh, Undone. That's a lie. <laughs> Musical absolutely thief. Absolutely the gospel. Oh I was wondering, I, when I was a kid, is it Take a Load Off Annie? I always thought it was Annie because later on they mentioned Anna Lee, mm-hmm. and I thought it would, but it's definitely Fanny. It is Fanny? Yes, yeah. Because isn't Fanny a slang term for the front naughty? And yeah, in England. Particularly in the UK. Yeah. At it one is. time, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You'd have to ask Levon. He, that's where they got all their songs. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah. He's a fan. monster. <laughs> Levon is no longer with us. Robbie is a monster. No, he's not. Yes, he is. <laughs> if he were here, I'd call him a monster. Watch the documentary. Oh that was Band of Brothers, but then he said, uh, we need to have it say Robbie Robertson and a Band of Brothers. That's oh. Robbie Robertson. How are you saying he doesn't steal? He's got Rob in his name twice. <laughs> now we're talking now, logic. Now, now. <laughs> Point proven. <laughs> Tell me again. <laughs> Okay, okay uh, coming up, we have more great stuff from animals. Uh, got a little tribute coming up and, and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Everything about the show is at bobandtom.com. Check it out now. State law.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, I'm Morty Gleckman for Casket Carnival. It's a Casket Carnival. You won't lose your shirt. It's a Casket Carnival. When we shovel on the dirt, we'll make sure you're really safe before we stick you in the grave. We won't steal from you. Casket Carnival. We've got lots of games and prizes, and since many of our coffins are scratch and dent or gently used models, we pass the savings on to you at Casket Carnival. And don't forget to say hello to our lovable mascot, Embalmo the Clown. Hey, yeah, there it. Thanks for coming to the Casket Carnival. You're really going to dig our prices there. Don't forget to ask about our layaway plan, huh? Hey, geez, what's wrong with these people? I'm dying up there, huh? Uh, at the cremation station, we want to earn your business. You know, sometimes I wish I were dead. Thanks for listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, well, hey, it's Mark Allison, and thank you so much for listening here, as uh, Floyd just said, to Bob and Tom 24-7. You know, we're the 24-hour-a-day Bob and Tom comedy station, and you can tell, right? <laughs> oh, we have fun, don't we? Hey, on the road this weekend, Donnie Baker is in Springfield, Missouri. Check him out at the Blue Room in Springfield, Missouri. Again, Thursday through Saturday night. DonnieBaker.com for more information as we roll through this Tuesday. Don't forget to get your letters into our relationship comedian expert. That's right. Allie Breen coming up on Wednesday. You can reach her across all social media. We love to hear your relationship letters, and we sure hope we're helping you out there in the world of love. Tom likes to call it sexy time, and that's coming up on Wednesday, or as we like to call it, hump day. Allie Breen, AllieBreen.com, and again, all social media, your Snapchat, your Instagram, your Facebook. You guys know your social media and how to send letters to Allie Breen. I don't even know why I waste my time. It seems like you're getting the letters to her because she sure is getting them and reading them back to us. That's coming up tomorrow in the 9 o'clock hour right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Entertainment News Desk. Coldplay wants you, the fan, to help energize their show, literally. The band's going to install special dance floors and energy-storing stationary bikes at stops on their latest world tour. They're going to ask you to help power the show as you dance or pedal along to the music. It's part of the band's pledge to be as energy-sustaining as possible and create a lower carbon footprint even when they tour. The team song encourages folks to meet the Mets, so when Shakira took them up on that offer, it turned out well for both sides. The Colombian board singer and her son Mylan were invited by the team to Saturday's game against Seattle. The team's Twitter feed has posted several pictures of them with Mets players like pitcher Max Scherzer, outfielder Travis Jankowski, infielder Eduardo Escobar, and manager Buck Showalter. Shakira says some players asked her to sign baseballs for them. She says next time she's going to ask the players to sign the guitars for her. And Brandi Carlisle, Allison Russell, and Yola are the leading nominees for the 2022 American Honors and Awards. Each of the three artists has a shot at the top three awards, Album of the Year, Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year. Other nominees for the Artist of the Year are Jason Isbell and Billy Strings. The winners are going to be announced September 14th at a ceremony in Nashville. And that's your entertainment news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. There's a new theme park opening in Saudi Arabia, everybody. What you failed to mention, they're still trying to decide if they're going to allow women on the bumper cars. <laughs> I mean, they'll be naturals with their no previous driving experience. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> they held a tiny penis parade last week. What you failed to mention, surprisingly, it happened to coincide with the unsatisfied woman's march <laughs> bob and tom in the morning and highlights all day long the bob and tom show weekday mornings at 6 a.m eastern on bob and tom 24 7 bob and tom five four three two one <laughs> <laughs> They put the F in professional. Time now for Great Moments in NFL History. The year 1976. The place, Miami, Florida. 
It was Super Bowl X, and America was celebrating her bicentennial. The national anthem that year was performed by a famous blind entertainer, Tom Sullivan. Mm. Let's listen to this rare recording of his <laughs> pre-game performance. Oh, say can you see? Mr. Sullivan, what? you're not on the microphone. Take three steps forward. Oh, oh okay. It's this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the dawn's early <laughs> light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities. Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. Wait a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Aren't you glad you came back? Uh, me. <laughs> Die. Choke. Choke. There's Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hello, and real quick, thank you to everybody on social media and online for the happy birthday wishes. They really meant a lot. I didn't see any of them. I was told about them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow on my Twitter if you'd like to go through it. There's Jess Hooker. She's here today. Hi. She brought in the uh, air-cooked pasta. I think the key to the air-cooked pasta is the right dips, <laughs> and we had the right dips to do it. The key to that, uh, Jess, is to um, uh, throw away the uh, air-cooked pasta and take your delicious sauce and put it on real wow. spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> that is, maybe we could do, no, we're, what are we doing next week? What? What are we doing next week? He said, they were, there's oh. Ace Cosby. Oh, no, hi, Willie. Hey, wait, let, let me, Chick. Go okay, ahead. Let me walk you through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, wait, till, wait till you hear where this is no, going. The reason I have to walk you through this is because Ace yeah. couldn't figure this out, had some dumb thing about turning it into spaghetti. Okay, so you... No, 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 no. Tell it correctly. You've got... <laughs> oh, you've got... You've got the... You've Jess, got the, Jess the, you're making hamburgers. I'm making hamburgers. The charcoal. Okay. The charcoal. On your stove. On my stove? That is not the scenario. Always. No, you never said you were grilling them. We always grill our hamburgers. We don't make no. them on the stove. As an impartial party, may I? Go ahead. Jess, yes. you're making hamburgers, but you don't have any hamburger buns. Okay. So you straighten out the burger while you cook it so it's hot dog shaped, <laughs> and then you make a hamburger but in a hot dog bun. And then Ace contended that instead of making a hamburger in a hot dog bun, you should... Make spaghetti. Which is a whole different thing. <laughs> right, I no, mean, if you have a pasta and you want spaghetti yeah, and not burgers, right. there was yeah. no, Even if you tell that story the correctly, yes, it, Your Honor. the logic is still lacking. Your Honor, my client is an idiot. Well, he's outside. I'm on my stovetop. Oh, Here's okay. the thing okay. that Tom wants that we all want okay. to see Tom eat is a hamburger shaped like a turd. <laughs> no, That's what this is. Yeah, that's dog exactly dog. what no, it right. is. This is, a, this is a real thing that happens. Okay. Have you ever had to use regular bread? Sure. For yeah. ham for hamburger and, buns. Yeah, we call them Friscos. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. if you yeah. if you have kids, they won't eat them. No, your kids won't. Your but kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine yeah. won't yeah. either. Yeah, yeah. you toast well, them. They're amazing. Because you both, I've seen how you parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't eat it. You don't eat anything. <laughs> okay. Good. Oh, you don't want to eat this? How about next right. box? <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want to eat this? Well, we'll go to the other Red Lobster. See what they want to do. <laughs> That is all true. <laughs> I'm just saying, there are times when you... Yes. It's all about being able to MacGyver your dinner. Call an audible, yep. And you call an audible, you t and have you ever had to do this where you take, you have to make the hamburger shaped like a, kind of like a hot dog, and you cook them in... <laughs> no. Ace's dumb idea is you take pasta, you Ace. go out to the grill, and it's going to fall between the I'm not slots. grilling, I'm cooking on my yeah. stove. Do you have a grill, Ace? Yes. Oh, okay. Ace, if I may, there was a moment, everybody was out of the studio, and I was sitting in here by myself, and uh, Ace, this has really bothered him. <laughs> because he came in, he was kind of talking to himself, and he just goes, who cooks hamburgers when you don't have buns? <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's, yeah. <laughs> To which I said, there's a chance Tom thought he bought hamburger buns, but bought hot dog buns. That's probably true. I guarantee yeah. that was it. It was some uh, sort of 4th uh, of July display. <laughs> right, right. everything out. He grabbed the wrong one. Yeah. And if you ever once had to go get frozen, you've got, oh, well, I've got some frozen buns in the freezer. Ugh. They never cut it. No. I'm sorry. 
Never. Yeah, I don't freeze any of my... I don't freeze them either, no. Yeah, that, that so do we get to take a picture of you eating a hamburger that looks like a turd or not? Is that what you want? Is that what I need to I think we do. Oh, yeah. That's what we're doing. Here's, I mean, it's analogous to me to the... Burger when, dogs? Is that what we're calling them? Burger dogs? Yeah. Remember when sure. Remember when Heinz came out with the green ketchup? Yes. And if you tried to eat it, there was... Even though it, if you were blindfolded, it wouldn't matter. Or, if or blind. Or yeah. if you were blind. Yes. yes. Some, yeah. some people are blind without the fold. You know, that's what uh, Seinfeld always said. The worst part about being blind is not knowing if there's bugs in your foot. Oh, or not. Why don't they call it guys. deaf folded if you club, 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 close your ears? Mm. Deaf folded? Okay, back to the well, burger dog. Yeah. Could, we, could well, you I please I... play? Could, I, could you give me the music so that I I could go do the show? What were you thinking? <laughs> oh. I don't, I, the look that Tom gave Go me. Go right ahead, Tom. He was <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the new show. What were you thinking? It's not the you know, here we're trying to do a little comedy. I'll tell you what. I, you know what I hope you were thinking? I hope you were thinking. Sure, we have a lot of uh, very fine blind listeners. I've sure. spoken to them many times, but for not a lot of deaf listeners. And that's the only good thing about that. And I think that because we can't get too many complaints because they're not going to say I was listening to your show, but I can't hear. There's nothing they, like blindfold is. A word. Right. But there's not a, a comparable for... Uh, uh, Deffold. Or like earplugs, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. that's so you're saying we should call... No matter how far we get on this road, yeah. no humor. Still, yeah. nothing. Well, I think we'll eventually <laughs> strike something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as we once sang... There's nothing funny down that road. Well, Ma Mike Mark is in here. Hey, Mike, you hear? I said, uh, how come <laughs> there's blindfold, but there's not deffold? Like when you... <clears throat> my, uh, <laughs> There's a man that knows comedy. Also, also when we make the ha hot dog shaped hamburgers for Tom, you could bring in some of the uh, burger dog, uh, uh, um, potato salad. No, the 50, oh. 50 50 burgers that you make. What are, yeah, you oh. can make you can make those What's like that. that. What are those? Fifty so fifty good. burgers are just uh, you take a pound of thick cut bacon, you put it in the food processor and grind it up in the same texture that you would get ground beef. And then you take a pound of ground beef and you put it together. So it's half together. bacon? Half bacon, half oh. ground beef. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Eh. those sound good. We also make, uh, <laughs> we also at our house, we make um, meat turtles. Have you guys ever done this? With a, with a D. <laughs> wow. Turtles with a D. Yeah, they're a little smaller. <laughs> so uh, you have a hot dog and then you uh, make the, the hamburger patty around it, okay? So the hot dog's right down the middle. Fat. And, and <laughs> Wait a minute. Do you cook the hot dog first? Um, no, you don't have so to. So it's a raw hot dog wrapped raw. in cold... Ground beef. Ground beef. Yes, Which I'm yes, sure yes. the cooking is coming up, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to eat that raw. Yeah, and then you snip the ends so that it looks like little legs, and then you wrap it in bacon, Oh yeah. and you cook it, and that's called a meat turtle. God, you go to a lot of trouble for My your kids. God. I would never I, do could, that. Could we, in a couple of weeks, could we do one of those two? I'll, I'll do meat turtles, oh. yeah. Jess, have you ever done the hot dog octopuses and the mac and cheese? Yes, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's of, you, a lot of fun, too. You cut off the end of the hot dog, and it has a little round end, and then you cut little eight little tentacles in there, oh. and you put it in that that's fun. It's fun. That's really fun. My kids got shortchanged. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are all fat. <laughs> As you drink a milkshake. All <laughs> well, I fancy I ever did was cut them in triangles. That was it. <laughs> so somebody write this down. It's going to be meat turtles, we'll hot dog shaped hamburgers that look uh -huh. like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> this all sounds good. Yeah. And then are you going to, someone instructed you that uh, Josh and Willie this Saturday night at Catch a Tours in Ilian, New York, and I guess there are only a handful of tickets left for this show. Mm -hmm. uh, there's apparently some great uh, bologna available up there. How about that? Now, yeah. can you, to bring that back, you'd have to get a cooler full of ice, right? Yeah. Well, uh, au contraire. It's uh, called Grogan Meat Market, and I ordered, uh, how, long, how much is that, a pound? I'm not sure how much They're it sending is. sending it to you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, do I, I have to pick it up for you? No, I shipped it. All oh, right. Josh, <laughs> you ungrateful friend. Piece of ship. <laughs> that's, 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 that that's a callback, that's a callback <laughs> to yesterday's <laughs> show open. For those of you, the, the four uh, people out there that heard come that. Come on. Uh, okay. Let's, we, we have time. Anyway, to get, I'll have, have baloney by uh, next. Uh, we next have to week. squeeze some news in here, Christy. This is okay. important. The FCC requires us to be public servants. <laughs> yeah, they do. Is it's a new thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Failing, yeah. failing yeah. miserably. And this, <laughs> and this qualifies. Huh? Okay. Drivers in Dallas, Texas encountered heavy delays during their morning commute. What happened during it? Thank you for asking. <laughs> That's what they get being cowboy fans, but go a ahead. A crash truck spilled 35,000 pounds of eggs onto a freeway. You're yoking. <laughs> Hear that? Ooh, wow. I can't. 
Jess, I can't. I can't from Jess. I ADFW reports the big rig hauling a trailer full of eggs. It crashed through a guardrail, hit a bridge support on I-30. The impact caused the trailer to rip apart, spill its load onto the roadway. No injuries. Cars scrambled everywhere. Oh, of course, it caused major... I feel like there's a lot of these. Yep. Yeah, we got a couple more. Oh, no, because yeah. we we're running out of time, so fortunately... Yeah. Well, is there, if I was overly easy for you to read. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of my buddies were in this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them, my friend uh, Dennis, was driving, and my buddy Sonny was in the passenger seat, and that car ended up sunny, sunny side, side up. up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't have to step on my punchline. Yet, really. I wasn't stepping on it. I don't know, man. I was beastie boysing it. I thought we were comedy buddies. <laughs> I thought we'd come in at the end together. <laughs> Wow. Mm. Beastie uh, boys. Eggs everywhere. <laughs> well, mm. have the police found out who did it? No. Didn't take him long to crack the case. Oh. Well, I mean, it wasn't... <laughs> what are you going to do when he's having so much fun? I know. I'm, I'm really happy. Him. They know who did it. It was a driver. He, he, uh, never mind. It's not like it was an were, were the other drivers <laughs> poaching the eggs and taking them home? <laughs> Josh, <laughs> Josh, I'm going to let, let him go. I'm going to let him go. Uh, I'm going to let him go, said the police. <laughs> That was that. Was that an Italian I'm officer? Let, I'm a little go. I'm, I'm a little go. Let him go. I'm, I'm a little go. Get the shell out of here. We can all do oh, it. <laughs> hey, you know what you could get this summer? You What's could that? get a gift at your door every month from our nice. folks at Bespoke Post. That's huh. right. It's a box of awesome with no eggs in it. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Box of, box of Awesome has, like, camping gear stuff, beach day stuff, travel. Exactly. What, what, what do you got over oh, there? Oh, Lord. Oh, shut up. Let me tell you a little they bit. They have nice stuff, etc. About <laughs> the river. Same joke. What's the river, Josh? This diving knife comes from Gear Aid, located in Bellingham, West Washington. Huh. That's Ooh. Bellingham, Washington, yes. not Bellingham, West Washington. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the better side It might side be of on town. the west side of very cool. How West do they Washington. know what you like, Tom? How well, I give up. You go to boxofaustin.com <laughs> and you take the quiz, and those answers will help everyone at uh, Bespoke Post and Box of Awesome pick the right box for you. And 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome, like the fine people from the west side of Washington and from a small up-and-coming <laughs> brand. West side of Washington, of course, Idaho. West side. <laughs> Get 20% off your first <laughs> monthly box when you no. sign up at boxofawesome.com. Well, Washington would be the Pacific? ocean. Yeah, southern side. Oh, sorry. The east side of Washington. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Christy. We're expecting logic from your yoking man. <laughs> Once again, a graduate of Columbia University. <laughs> an Ivy League school. On the west coast of boxofawesome.com. Oh, Enter the code. Shut up, Bob and Tom. At checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code Bob and Tom for 20% off your first box. Be like me and go home and sit on the couch and cry and wait for your box to be delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send tissues this month. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Coming up, are we going to do our um, animal hunk? Yes. Get all these animal stories out of the way? Yes, okay, we got some we really are. good ones. Uh, I'm sort of looking forward to all of this. Also, we do have that spinal tap update. Yep. And what not to do with your Maserati. Yep. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, man. This is Donnie Baker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's right, Donnie Baker on the road this weekend. The Blue Room in Springfield, Missouri. DonnieBaker.com for more. He starts that big gig Thursday night through Saturday night. Again, get your tickets now before they're gone. DonnieBaker.com in Springfield, Missouri. My name is Mark Allison. Rolling through a Tuesday morning with you right here. It's May 17th. Hope you're having a great day. So glad you could join us. More fun and frivolity right around the corner. Keep it tuned to hear Bob and Tom 24 Seven. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison. With things you may have missed, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has given the strongest hint yet he would like to pay less for Twitter than his $44 billion offer made last month. Musk told a Miami Technology Conference a viable deal at a lower price would not be out of the question. Also at the All-In Summit, Musk estimated at least 20% of Twitter's 229 million accounts are spam bots, a percentage he said was at the low end of his assessment. The appearance came a few hours after Musk began trolling Twitter CEO Paraj Agrawal, who posted a series of tweets explaining the company's effort to fight bots and how it's consistently estimated less than 5% of Twitter accounts are fake. Someone new is joining the ranks of fitness enthusiasts who monitor the number of steps they take each day with Fitbits and other fitness tracking devices. Only Helen 
isn't human. She's a 30-year-old white rhino at Walt Disney World. Helen went out into the savannah at the Kilimanjaro Safaris attraction at Animal Kingdom on Monday wearing a fitness device all day. The purpose to gather data on the number of steps she takes each day, whether she's walking, running, or sleeping, and which part of the man-made savanna she favors the most. Technology there at Disney. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Boy, this week in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, sure has a lot of dummies in town. It's the annual ventriloquist convention. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> I'm sorry? What did you say? From the ventriloquism convention? Yeah. And uh, I'm not moving on this. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can tell. Um, oh, we can tell. I can tell your, your lips are pretty, so, uh, uh, pretty still there. Jerry, what's the name of your partner? Timmy. Timmy? It's really. Can, can, can <laughs> Timmy. Can, can Timmy be speaking to the phone? Hand in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to drink some water. Drink some water while talking to us. Okay, okay go ahead. <laughs> I'll call you back. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. They discovered the scorched ring box, but the ring inside was not damaged. The car was on fire, Josh. What do you want? This kid, this kid buys an engagement ring. Godwin, what do you got for us? Our car is a burning thing. <laughs> and it heats up the engagement ring. Steaming hood and melting tires. I left the ring in a car on fire. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Now in theaters from Bob and Tom Pictures. Hey, Christy, it's Rob. It's been a while. I was just thinking maybe we should give it another try. Call me later. Christy, Christy. Pick up. Uh, hey, how you doing, girl? It's me. I'm back in town. Man, the West Coast sucked. Oh, come on. Give me a call. Hi, Christy. Hey, it's, it's me. Remember me? Um, hey, I was looking at some old pictures of, you know, that time back in, back in Tuscaloosa. When, well, you know, I'm sure you remember. I'll, uh, I'll call me. From Bob and Tom Pictures, Christy Lee stars in... The X-Men. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's your favorite drummer. I'm in town playing for a new band called Saber. Call me. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's me, Donnie, the biker. Hey, I was uh, cleaning out the boat, and I found a pair of your, uh... Anyways, I think they're yours. Uh, can we try it again, man? I got the motor fixed. And I swear to God it works better. You ain't gonna have to row or nothing this time. Call my pager. Christy Lee's X-Men. Now showing uh, every other weekend and Wednesdays if she's not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> Right now, Killer Bees joins us in the studio. Uh, Bees, how you doing? Real good, man. I get up a shopping it. list over here. My wife's eating in bed now. She's at that part of the pregnancy where they crave all this food. Mm. Uh -huh. Some people have mirrors over the bed. We got a sneeze guard. <laughs> 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 Sleeping on those posture pedic seal a meal, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't lived till you're making love, and your wife says, "Go slow. I'm spilling my chili." <laughs> <laughs> the essential morning radio all day. And all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, Josh. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Pat. <laughs> oh, nothing? No, Mike. Hey. There he is. Hey. Hey. Wow, those names didn't help any, did they? <laughs> 
There's Josh Arnold at the sidekick chair. Hi. He's got Je- the names right there on the button, Ace. Come on. Jess Hooker is here. Hello. The Cooker. Uh, we just had pasta chips with some fabulous dip, and next week we're going to have hot dog shaped hamburgers. Tom is involved. Do the math. What I'm saying is a MacGyver situation when you're cooking and you've, you've got the grill going, you want to make some burgers, you realize you don't have any buns, but you've got hot dog buns, so you go for it. And also something called meat turtles next week, so mm-hmm. that'll be exciting. There's Ace wow. Cosby. Because the, the plan B there is you take the hot dog buns Shut and up. then you you cut them in <laughs> half. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Got, I hate that. What? It's, it's, it's not elegant. <laughs> it's not elegant. Willie Griswold. You're eating hamburgers. <laughs> I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> she's right. Hamburgers Wait, don't need on. to be elegant. You eat them on a paper plate, for God's sake, with potato chips. <laughs> she's right. You know how much I hate paper plates. I know you do. I do the dishes every night. I do not oh, like well, paper well, plates. Well, 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 well. There are more of us than him. I know. Why can't we win? <laughs> Me and you know what? I don't know when the it, check. Josh. I don't know when it was, but oh, you're right. uh, <laughs> Bob many years ago uttered the famous words, you know, if we rush him. <laughs> He was they, right. He was right. You know what's funny, Chick? Finley turned to me the other day and said the same thing. <laughs> There's more kids than him. I think that me, Hart, Finn, and Winnie the dog could take over yes, if he had to. and there could be a new baby any minute. Who knows? Well, I hope to God not. My uh, God. Why does he smile? Why does Tom smile when you say that? Because you were joking about having another kid the other oh, day. Oh, boy. And we were joking about it in the air. Yeah. yeah. And as, as there, were, there were some guys working on this house that I'm working on. <laughs> they come up and, hey, congratulations, you're having another baby. Like, what? Oh, wait a minute. That was a joke on the air. Oh. Was it? Yeah, yeah. That was, was a it? joke. Wink, uh-huh. wink. Uh, my point is this. Yes. Uh, we're talking to Jessica Hooker, who happens to be an excellent chef. And by the way, your marinara, delicious. I'd love to have you um, give me that recipe. Sure. The, um Charge them. The, the no. point is, once again, if you're if you, in Ace, I'll, tr- I'll walk you through this slowly. Oh, uh, this? You've got this the again. <laughs> you've got the grill going outside, okay. And everybody's now. over at the house, ready to have some burgers. And you realize you don't have any buns. Yeah, but but Ace is not at his grill. He's at I'm his stove. In my kitchen. There, that was in his, your honor tonight, Tom. That I've got, was I've his got some ground turkey at home. I'm having turkey burgers, burgers tonight. I do have buns. You're wow. cooking them inside. Yes. <laughs> what country are you from? Uh, in America, when it's weather like this, we, we cook the grill. burgers outside. Do you have a, when, do you have when a I grill? grill do you have a griddle in your kitchen? No. Oh, well. When I grill, I, I, can't I, help I you. use charcoal and, and wood chips. Okay. Outside. Not, well, not, they, they have those at yeah, the yeah, store. Yeah. Right charcoal now. inside often leads to death by carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a, the, Christy, it's a production. Uh, oxygen out gotcha. of there. The point being here, yes. <laughs> you have to MacGyver stuff. So you take, instead of yeah. instead of taking the hot dog buns and cutting them into two squares. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? That's not elegant. Hot dog sliders is actually a pretty good idea. That's not terrible. All you have to do is slice them this way and then open them up. You could do that. You could. Could splay out the hot dog bun, yes. slice it in half, yes. going perpendicular to the original cut. Right. And then you've got... What about... But this, that's not elegant. I prefer making the... Not elegant. The, 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 the <laughs> other way you can do it is make the burgers themselves shaped like hot dogs. What about hot dogs on a hamburger bun? No. You slice those. Oh, I've done that. Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, Everybody I, shut up! <laughs> I, see, now we're talking here. I, I totally agree with you, Chick. They don't taste right. Uh. They don't taste right. <laughs> is, I don't know if it's psychological. We need to get, is there such a thing as a food psychologist? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah she's right here. <laughs> I think I, I th- when you take hot dogs and put them on a hamburger bun, and that, that doesn't work. Wait, is a food psychologist someone that knows about food, or you feel bad and they just give you food? No, they can explain sense. why two things that are the same taste different. <laughs> no, the, the psychology of food, I think, is what he means. Not. I want to go on record. <laughs> I asked everyone to shut up, <laughs> and everyone didn't. Right. I got this from my friend Steve. In the mid-'80s, there was a restaurant called Burger Dog. It was hamburger-shaped like hot dogs. They closed within a year. <laughs> yeah. Now, there may be a successful one somewhere else. I'm sure it sounds like a great idea. Oh, come on down to Burger Dog. A lot of gas stations will do stuff like that.
the uh, burger dogs. The vor, the, uh, the vornado or something is yes, that, uh, there is something like that. Yeah, they yeah. put it in the the hot dog roller and they cook. A, right, it's a I, burger I, essentially. Burger. One yeah. of my favorite oh. fast food items that sadly is gone now was the McDonald's snack wrap Big Mac version. Mm -hmm. Terrific, and it was yeah, like a, a you're burger absolutely right. Cut in half and they put it in a little wrap with some lettuce and some mac sauce. And that, yep, no. shredded cheese. What did I just say about wrapping meat? In lettuce. What did I no, say? No, no, this was in a tortilla. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. My fault. Yeah. Now, once again, yesterday, <laughs> once again, said. yesterday, um, as kind of a distraction, so we wouldn't look uh, that way, Christy mentioned how much she likes having hamburgers instead of a bun, having them in lettuce. Yeah, romaine. I think it's tasty, too. Yeah, I, like I, it, I do, yeah. too. Yeah. Once again, if I were president, that would be made illegal. No. <laughs> illegal. <laughs> All right. And that Hardy's does a good job with it. That's all oh, I got to okay. say. Well, 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 well. What are you going to do? Now, we have our animal hunk here since we're talking about eating them <laughs> you're not gonna eat this one a florida couple says says they spotted a huge alligator in their backyard in florida wow yeah i know right in the <laughs> now, family friendly orange hey, on woods God. estates neighborhood yeah this is why i'm sorry i interrupted you go ahead why and it's a family friendly orange woods estates neighborhood every body of water in florida has a gator in it. And this was a, but there's a tiny pond. There's no major lakes near this place. Mr. Trent Mermelstein told WPLG News. Where we search for gators. We're just eating breakfast. We saw this big <laughs> head, looked like a gator. And it just walked by the window. Has anybody Go, seen do, the do, dog? Do, do, do. Oh. I thought it was just my imagination. After realizing there was an eight foot long gator in the backyard, the Mermelsteins called Davy police. There isn't a body of water in their backyard, but there is a small pond in front of the neighborhood. Davy police. According to the station, two professional That's trappers. Davy and Goliath joke. <laughs> from wow. the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission responded to capture the reptile, and it will be taken to an alligator. Anybody farm. seen the mailman? <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that my dog joke's a little more accessible. I mean, the gator's I, much. Why up to? The, 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 the gator's much more likely to eat a dog than uh, a full-grown man. Yeah, I mean, in Florida, I, obviously, you, you don't be surprised to see a gator. It's no. not like you're having lunch right. in Harbor Springs, no. Michigan, and while well, we were at the pier, and a 12-foot gator walked by. Wow, that would be a shock. That'd yeah. be that'd be something. But so, oh. why did this feel like news to you? <laughs> Teach us. Uh, because <laughs> I want to enjoy my time left yeah. here. Okay? <laughs> However, I a week, too. a month, another year. Because it, it is. once one understands the neighborhood is not a place where they typically see alligators, you see. It's Especially a, a family-friendly neighborhood. Mm. I don't know why they make that distinction. Well, yeah, because gators don't like, they will never go to a family-friendly place. God it's forbid. It's a small pond. I'm okay, sorry. <clears throat> have you guys ever had gator nuggets? Yeah. yeah. You know how you cook sure them? Sure have. How? Oh, crock pot. <laughs> I mean, at least we got something. <laughs> see? See now, Josh? That's funny. <laughs> you cook gator in a crock pot. Where's see? the mailman? <laughs> <laughs> now that is solid gold, baby. <laughs> have we heard from Ace today? Christy, what would we You're hear so from Ace close. about? Oh. Oh. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. We're talking about food all morning. I found a store, and all they sell are donuts and bagels. Mm -hmm. oh, you know what you call a store that only sells donuts and bagels? No, what? Whole Foods. Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You beastie boy, start laughing at my stuff, or else I ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no. It's See, not I, like we don't know what's going on. I, I would never have guessed have that, and I, I would have really enjoyed that had Josh not ruined it. Or, 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 uh, he's, he's learning. Josh, you're not ruining. You're beastie boysing. Oh. You're helping. You're, everyone's coming. I here. was trying to ruin. <laughs> Whole foods because it's it's Got donuts, holes, and donuts yeah. Yeah. And, Boy, oh and bagels. Yeah. Oh. Fine, fine joke. Like we learned that in first grade. But Gosh, ruined it. <laughs> you didn't ruin it. Christy, uh, this is a story that I think we can have. We can all enjoy, and have, it's a sweet story. Oh, here we go. It's about. There's no way anyone can ruin this. It's about giraffes. A newborn giraffe at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park has been outfitted with an orthotic. The Please calf. tell me it's a neck brace. <laughs> you see how to be funny, Chick, because... Their necks is too long. Gir giraffes' necks is too long. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, the calf named Mizzutini was born in February with her front limb bending the, way, the wrong way. Mizzutini would be great with some of your sauce on it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that delicious marinara. Her front Mizzutini. limb? Yeah, Safari Park staff feared she might die if they did not immediately correct <laughs> the condition, oh. <laughs> which could prevent her from nursing and walking around the habitat. 
So she was outfitted with a custom brace, and after 39 days, the problem was corrected. She can now run along with the other giraffes at the park. Oh, Isn't that sweet? sweet. sweet. very sweet. I'll yeah. show you what. Me and the family drove I don't know how far to get here to see that giraffe. It can <laughs> only got three legs on it. You try, better trot him out of here. I don't want to see one in a brace. I want to see tripod. Uh, three like a giraffe. Uh, <laughs> I also want to see one of those headless monkeys I heard about. <laughs> I know they're real. What kind of wild animal park is it? <laughs> Where's the Jeffrey. lion bag? I hear Jeffrey's working here now. He got fired by oh. Toys R Us. Oh, he sure mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Poor Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. They say he likes boy boy giraffes. What? Oh, my God. Is that right? Let's let's explore let's go this, let's let's whatever go it is. The hell is, is this Is there another be? story? <laughs> Ace, can you do a joke? <laughs> I'd rather talk about Jeffrey Epstein than talk about that. Oh, That's God. terrible. That's he was named after. <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry. In Colorado, they were relieved to announce that reports of a wolf pack sighting Turned out to be a group of St. Bernards. <laughs> well, that's just as scary. In well, 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 Cujo. Well, Cujo was yeah. a wolf. Well, Cujo Mr. was a St. Bernard. <laughs> well, Mr. Magoo, where did you see the wolf pack? Colorado Parks and Wildlife received a report as well as a video of a possible wolf sighting. Sheriff's deputies assisted CPW oh, officers in investigating. A, was it a wolf sighting? Yes. <laughs> when the uh, reporters tried to talk to the person who thought the St. Bernards were wolves, they, yes. of course, shoved their microphones in his face. Oh, no. no. He, said, he well. said, get those <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. Was, that was a reward for people who've been listening for a while. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Sheriff's sorry. deputies assisted CPW officers in investigating and determined the sighting was actually a group of large breed St. Bernard dogs that live in the area. As opposed to the miniature St. Bernards. <laughs> Authorities say the dogs Is have St. Bernadettes? <laughs> God, I'm working hard. Documented I mean, I, history of escaping their enclosure. The dog's owner confirmed the animals were running loose at the time the alleged wolf sighting occurred. Wow. Boy, put a wolf and a St. Bernard side by side, and if you can't tell the difference. Maybe they were drinking the brandy out of the, the wolf's uh, the little kegs around their neck. I, <laughs> My goodness. I love St. Bernard's. Are they wild oh, St. Bernard's? Bags. No, they just get out of their enclosure, the owner said. Got it. No, here yeah. you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did, we just dug it up, though, when you said little mini St. Bernard's are called Bernadette's. St. Bernadette's. <laughs> Remember that, that classic Four Tops song, Bernadette's? Oh, yeah. There's a it's famous a mistake song. in that song. He there comes is. in early. Oh, my God. He I'm comes in early. Yep. What a music nerd. Boy, I hate and that when that happens. Okay. I love that. He comes in early. Is that, you should know. Is that, where the, is that where the pause is? Yeah. He comes in early. And they I kept, love they that part it. of that song. They kept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds it's super cool. Yeah. I was once the fifth top. <laughs> yeah. Kicked out. For yeah, I'd like to see some. What's that I'd story? like to see some uh, photos of that. One tour. of these. <laughs> things is not like the, is that the manager? Wouldn't that be funny? There was that era where everyone called themselves. Oh, of course, he's the fifth Beatle. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the fifth top. I <laughs> Can you pick out which one is the fifth one? I love, I love the four tops. I've never cared for that song, and I don't know why. Oh, I yeah, love that song. Yeah, there's the the part Pat's talking about. We'll dig it up when we come that's back. That's all right. No, that's okay. <laughs> I know it's great. Pass. There's a nice long pause. Yeah. I didn't realize that was comes in early. Oh, you take great. a nice long pause. Did you hear that Coldplay's <laughs> pulling an electric Amish? Did you see this? What? Yeah, Coldplay's, Coldplay's doing pulling. something with bicycles. And yeah, they want fans to help energize their show. Literally, the band will install special dance floors and energy storing stationary bikes. Bikes. You know, that's how the electric Amish power all their equipment. Right. Uh, on their latest world Except tour. Except the electric Amish are kidding. These guys are just... And they will ask fans to help power the show the as they dance or pedal along to the music. I blame Paltrow for this. Part of the band's pledge to be energy sustaining as possible and create a lower carbon it's footprint. A complete fraud. Oh, for God's sake. Well, it's, 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 if, if you really had the bikes powering the thing, people in the first rows wouldn't be able to hear it. <laughs> it's well, they realize they're not going to be able to power the whole show. That mm. wouldn't make sense. Okay, they're they're all green, right? 
Hey, and uh, it's official. It's equal to this. By the way, it'll be an acoustic set. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Go ahead. A sequel to This Is Spinal Tap is in the works. According to Variety, Rob Reiner will direct the sequel to the 84 Rock mockumentary. Man, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, yeah they're going to be old, I old, know. aren't they? Leave no, that's, fu- that's fine, but man, I... Michael McKeon, 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 Christopher Gaston, Harry Shearer reprising their roles as Spinal Tap bandmates. David St. Hubbins, Nigel Tufnell, and Derek Smalls. The film is scheduled to be released March 19th of 2024, the 40th anniversary of the original. All right. Yeah. Uh, these guys are so great. I they're not going to not mm. be. It, it'll be great. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, yeah. I uh, was looking, what is it called? IMBD? Yep. They've already rated it um, 11 out of 10. Oh, good. Oh, that's, yeah. That, that's, that's how good it's going to be. One it's better. A hat on the hat. Is, um, mm-hmm. The, uh, <laughs> the original has been inducted <laughs> into the U.S. National Film Registry. And on a sort of not so happy note, uh, the actual drummer. The, oh, yeah. Let's mention this. The yeah. real guy. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, died a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he did. Oh. So, again, the joke in the movie is that every one of their drummers explodes and is oh. killed in some accident. You've never yeah. seen This Is Spinal Tap? No. Oh, yeah, my. you might get a kick out of it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. the best. Fred okay. Willard has this great little guest <laughs> role in it. He's okay. so funny. Yeah. It's, it's funny. funny. Yeah. Really, really funny. Okay. But, yeah, I think we're all kind of concerned. Do you do you mess with something that that's, that's that perfect? Yeah. yeah. You know, like when they made the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. They did? Yeah, staying alive. It's called Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't go over Sunday alive. night cool down. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday morning. Sunday night cool. <laughs> Ibuprofen is the working title. The Sunday morning shakes. <laughs> Sunday morning, oh yeah, our friend jumped off a bridge. Oh. <laughs> I, and that's a joke he fell. That's right. <laughs> Tony okay. tried to save him, but yeah. uh, staying alive. It was too late. Staying alive. <laughs> he felt bad. Um, we'll see. Oh, uh, and uh, Karen Lynn Gorney. Yee. Yeah, chick doesn't like her. Saturday I know the other girl's way hotter. Yeah, Donna Pescow, right? Dude, yeah. way hotter. Saturday Night Fever is a really dark movie. It is. Oh. I mean, the original. Though. Karen, yeah. Carolyn oh, yes. Gorney was on All My Children as Tara or something. Those guys aren't good dudes. No. That's the, no. They're like almost the anti-heroes. And didn't you, didn't you in all truth, Chick, didn't the, your original uh, original cocktail that you would drink, didn't Son you? Son of a bitch, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Believe you remember this. Yes, I ordered, when I would, went out into the adult world, I started ordering seven and sevens because that's the only drink I knew from <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. <Theater. laughs> that's fine. Did you like them? That's what Double J drank. Yeah, I think that would be, good, yeah. we could probably do a whole show of just taking... Maybe we should do this tomorrow. Why you started drinking what you started drinking when you started drinking. Oh, a lot of them, will, for me, will end, uh, divorce. We'll be in there somewhere. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the big one. Not yeah. the reason. Not why. No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, the what? reason you started high school, you're a little stressed out. Yeah, yeah, stressed. Yeah, there are people out there that started drinking white Russians because of the big Lebowski. Sure. Yeah, that you're right. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, in, in real life, uh, while at a, a certain young age, I remember a friend of mine's brother walking up to us and going, Sours before five. <laughs> like, hey, look, we're 16. <laughs> we're trying yeah. to have some fun, you jackass. <laughs> that guy sounds like one of the biggest douchebags. <laughs> yeah, I, I still remember his name. I, I should t- track him down. You know what I'd like to do right now? Take a nice, uh, nice snooze in my beautiful sleep number bed. This is uh, Better Sleep Month officially. And uh, so there's no better time to check out Sleep Number because their response to Better Sleep Month is a better pricing on the famous Sleep Number 360 Special Edition Smart Bed, knocking a thousand bucks off the price. Quick survey, Chick McGee, your Sleep Number setting is what? 100. I like a very firm mattress. Tom. And then, of conversely, we have Christy Lee, your setting for Sleep Number is what? 45. A Sleep Number setting of 45, which means um, a softer. Quite you will. a bit softer. And you could change that. You could go to 100 tonight at the touch of a button. I could. The other side of the bed has its own settings. So you could be 45 on this side, 100 over here, or Josh, your setting is? 65. You could be 60, whatever you want. It's, it's like the Freedom Bed from Sleep Number. And it is their special Memorial Day sale. Like I said, knock a thousand bucks off. Sleep Number 360's famous Special Edition 360 Smart Bed. Queen Bed's now uh, $19.99. This is a limited time offer. So check it out by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Uh, that'll help us. That'll help them too. Sleepnumber.com slash BT show. I love my sleep number bed. Coming up, we uh, may be able to knock off a couple more, a uh, couple more delightful animal stories. Maybe a little bit of history. What Maybe. we learned on today's show was, why did we listen? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at one eight 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 Bob Tom one or at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
things you hear on the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, Norman, honey, what you doing? It's getting late. I'm downstairs, honey. Um, uh, just getting some cereal. Snow comes. Thank God he found it. I was getting desperate. I hope this works. You know, Judy tried it with Ted, and she said he's become insatiable. Boy, will Snookums be in for a treat, because her hubby is chomping on the new cereal for men who are sexually dysfunctional. <laughs> it's nuttin' raisin, honey. Mmm. <laughs> this sure is tasty. Mmm. <laughs> honey? I'll be right up. <laughs> Nuttin' Raisin Honey, the cereal that gets you up in the morning, or any time for that matter. Nuttin' Raisin Honey, eat them from the bowl or right out of the box. <laughs> hey, it's Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. What up, Roy Wood Jr.? Mark Allison here for everything Bob and Tom. Check out BobandTom.com. All the latest highlights, news, information, and, of course, links to all of our social media sites. We know you kids love your social media. And why wouldn't you? We have lots of social media for you. Wormholes you can't get out of. Check it out. Our Facebook page, our Snapchat, our Instagram. We're all over the place. But our one location you can always count on, BobandTom.com, including the Bob and Tom Show puppets and Smack Tom. You know, we learn a lot during the course of the show and today, no exception, Chick McGee will be back with a look at that and Tom with a look at history on this May 17th. Stay tuned. We're not done with you yet. Keep it here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom News Desk. The White House is taking steps to ease a nationwide shortage of baby formula. Among the measures announced by the Biden administration include reopening the largest domestic manufacturer of baby formula and increasing the level of imported formula. The Abbott Nutrition Plant has been closed since February because of contamination issues. Before it can resume producing formula, however, Abbott must overhaul its safety protocols and procedures. McDonald's is pulling its golden arches in Russia. The U.S.-based burger behemoth is selling its 850 restaurants in Russia over the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine. Mickey D says it is looking for a buyer who will keep its 62,000 workers in Russia employed and keep paying them until the deal's closed. McDonald's said it's the first time the company has ever de-arched or exited a major market. And two more defendants have pleaded guilty for their role in a multi-million dollar scheme to manipulate the Amazon marketplace e-commerce platform. All told, six people have been charged in the conspiracy, which federal prosecutors say involved paying bribes to get Amazon employees and contractors to leak confidential data. That data? Well, it would be used to grant certain sellers a competitive advantage on Amazon Marketplace. The two men who pleaded guilty yesterday faced sentencing in September. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Hey, man, it's Donnie Baker. And the fact remains, there's nothing better than being a VIP. And I don't mean like his dudes on Pervert Rabbit Xanadus. I'm talking about a Bob and Tom VIP. Best thing, you'll never miss another minute of the show. I swear to God, you can hear the show here in the morning. And then because you're a Bob and Tom VIP, you'll get the podcast of the entire show, a 12-month library of podcasts, hundreds of Bob and Tom comedy tapes, and a 60-day video archive of the show. Bob and Tom VIP. You have to get it. It's state law. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The year was 1912. The place, Hocker on Rhine, Germany. <laughs> After several complaints about unsanitary conditions from competitors in a sledding event, it was determined that some of the participants were unaware of the precise nature of a particular event. Once the officials removed all the phlegm balls from the course and explained that the name of the event was pronounced 
luge and not loogie. The competition continued without any further problem. Ironically, the eventual winner of the luge event was an Austrian named Karl Boogermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete <laughs> who was disqualified. <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. This is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Bob and Tom, you can pick your morning radio show. And you can pick your nose, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. You are Join us <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Welcome back. There's Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. Josh Arnold, sidekick chair. Hi. Jessica Hooker's here. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Manning the track phone hotline, hot phone, and has one hand on a huge can of SpaghettiOs. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. And I'm Chick McGee. Tom? Just finished our big animal hunk. Thank you, Kristen. Did we do the story about the um, elk on the roof of the mall in Poland? Really? Did you see this? I, I have I, yeah. it. You, Do you have that one? Okay, I thought I couldn't Officials in Poland are saying a wandering elk was rescued after it was spotted on the roof of a shopping mall. The municipal police in El Blag... Uh -oh. Sorry, that's, that's your secret word, isn't it? Municipal police in God. El Blag said officers were called out on reports of Eurasian elk also known as Eurasian moose. How many Polish officers does it take to get an elk off a roof? <laughs> Running on a local street. <laughs> you know, the Poles right now are incredibly brave and helping out a lot of great people. So well, we officers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. While officers were responding to the scene, the animal made its way to the O'Grody Shopping Center where it ran up to a parking area onto the building's roof. The O'Grody, ironically, sparkling clean. Yeah, not grody at all. No. A veterinarian was requested to safely sedate the elk before officers moved in and moved the animal to a local forest. So this is it's nice that even in Poland, the, the seniors in high school do a senior prank. Yeah. Let's, yes. let's put an elk on the roof of the mall. What do you say? Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're all brave people. It, it doesn't say how it got up there, though. I mean, <laughs> it, it ran up to the parking area on the building's roof is what it said here. So it oh, must so have been quite easily. The, yeah. There's yeah. a ramp yeah. leading Apparently up to it. it. it well, matter of fact, it's wonder it doesn't happen every day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was looking for the Good Hooves store. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Why, why, wait a minute. Why does an, uh, why does an At elk... At the mall, the Good Hooves store. Good Hooves. Is good it hooves. a good feet store? Good Hooves. Maybe build a moose. <laughs> build a moose. <laughs> build a moose. <laughs> build a moose, you see it. Time now for Today in History. Have There's you Tom. looked at it? Nope. Nope. Uh, I, I love it when he does look at it. It's, it's an adventure in broadcast. Oh, dictators, a lot of World War II. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, Peter is... Chris quit kiss on this date, oh, Ace. Gosh, Did you know we, that? Will we ever recover? No. Man. Uh, 1964, the first Tim Hortons opens in Ontario. Ah, uh, Timmy's. Was Tim a uh, hockey guy or something? Was I he... don't really know I much think he was Tim a Horton. hockey player, actually. I think I've heard that. He okay. was the coach of the uh, Canadians for uh, seven uh, seasons. He also invented all dressed <laughs> chips. Oh, well, Lawrence Welk died on this date in 1992. And he also uh, hears a who every now and then. <laughs> yes, occasionally. Oh, Horton. 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 <laughs> here's a, here's a who. 1965, the FBI said the lyrics to Louie Louie were too unintelligible to be declared pornographic. <laughs> well, those days are gone. Well, the FBI would be busy now with a lot of today's music. Uh, it certainly <laughs> am, I, am I the only one who just just looked like an oil painting? You know, I used that argument on my parents when I would turn on the scrambled spice channel. Yeah? <laughs> I would go, this, 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 what? Don't yell at me. That's far. You can't tell what's on the screen. You can't tell if it's pornographic or not. <laughs> <laughs> Going home early. <laughs> I mean, I have worked for four hours. I laughed at it. I was having you didn't laugh loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> not loud enough. How about this? Okay, happy birthday. Let's get through. Turn it off. This is, I'd never heard this before. On, in 1975, Mick Jagger had to get 20 stitches after yeah. punching a restaurant window. <laughs> Was wow. the window shattered? Shattered. Shattered. You know what restaurant it was? 
Oh, God. Oh, yeah, Pat. Ruby Tuesdays? Tuesdays? That's correct. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ace, how dare you step on my joke? <laughs> That's uh, stepping uh, on. Uh, uh, Beastie uh, Boys. Uh, 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 1936, happy birthday to the late Dennis Hopper. Mm. Uh, oh, he's not that. celebrating. Why are we oh, saying that? These are all sad. Oh, should have God. taken the director's uh, chair uh, away from him uh, as soon as he started. <laughs> this is like... God, what a mess. The march of death here that Bill Paxton. That's oh. all right. They're all, all oh, to be celebrated. Oh. Bill Paxton, you know, he was in Dallas with a Kennedy. Craig Ferguson, oh. 59 today. Oh, Craig Ferguson's still with us. Thank you. Yeah. Like, enjoy Craig Ferguson's. Got on his well, that's book. one. Jim Nance, Chick's favorite. Uh, Mr. Vanilla could re- um, be replaced by Joe Sixpack. Enya. Yeah. I love Enya. I don't care who knows it. Yeah. What? Wow. Yes. You Do you, and... Willie? No, I don't love it's, it. It's Enya the whole way to uh, <laughs> Ileon, New York. Oh, <laughs> It'd be so relaxed. Hey, when you get doing there. anything next weekend, man? Maybe we can hang Isn't, out. Isn't uh, Enya's first name? Is it? <laughs> is it Enya? <laughs> <laughs> Look how hard he's laughing. <laughs> that was pretty good. Though. He's, he's overjoyed. Hey, what is, is she from like Iceland or something? Is it it Enya? Enya? <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, is it Enya? Come on. <laughs> uh, Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nail guy, born in '65 on this date. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to say. His and name. Uh, this guy is it? Uh, Josh? Is it Am or Ham or Home? Han Solo, come on. Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, I don't know. Uh, death metal, I don't know. <laughs> Josh, is it a Josh whom? Or Josh who? Homie. Homie? It's homie? Yep. Oh, it okay. I got the pronouncer right there. Homie. Okay, homie. Hey, so, <laughs> Happy so, homie, so, so H-O-M. His, homie. So if you're his friend, he really is your homie. Homie. That's right. Josh homie, no matter homie. What, Sphere of life. You Time now for our things we learn. <laughs> somebody's got to sh- somebody's got to stop him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pat Godwin's lonely and cold over there. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know how that started. Ace Cosby keeps Spaghettios in his office, which uh, begs two questions: Why uh, Spaghettios? And wait, Ace has an office. Why, why has two. Uh, he has two. He has two. Two office. or three offices. Yeah. Uh, Tom still is in love with someone named Major Garrett. Love uh, CBS News. And no, he's just does, does, does fine work on there NBC. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Tom revealed the secret to frying bologna. Of course, you make a cut at, uh, think of it as a clock, at yeah, noon, yeah, three, yeah. six, and nine. And, uh, Small you know, cut. Fry flat. Keeps it from turning into a dome. Uh, uh, leave we'll be back. Thanks for turning Josh's mic off. Uh, uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Keep us with you at all times. Get the Bob and Tom app now at your app store. State law.